Like sometimes you're like, I'm, I'm not going to get dessert. But when you're having a dessert night, I mean, you probably have dessert nights all the time. But like t sometimes the fuck? it's like, yeah, that was uncalled for. On today's part of my take, we have Frankie Muniz in studio. One of the coolest careers of anyone we've ever had in studio. Uh, former actor, Malcolm in the Middle, now race car driver. We also have the return of Billy Football. His two, there's one month suspension is officially over. He joins us for the Mount Rushmore of ways to kick it up a notch. And then we have the, the Open Championship. Incredible golf on Sunday. We're going to recap it all. Who's back? Great show coming up for you. It's brought to you by our friends from Coors Light. Summer is full of official events like weddings, graduations, and annual 4th of July barbecues. But everyone knows the best part of summer are the unofficial ones. This summer, Coors Light is the official beer of everything unofficial, celebrating those moments that truly make summer chill. Uh, PFT, what summer activities or unofficial moments would be enhanced with a Coors Light in your mind? Hanging out at the beach with the boys. That's a good answer. Mine would be Rory McIlroy actually hitting a putt and winning the Open Championship so that uh, Hank and I could have cashed our tickets. That would have been a great unofficial moment of the summer enhanced by Coors Light. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill. That's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. I was retweeting a few last night looking delicious. Summer chill starts with Coors Light. Make the most of your summer with a chance to win exclusive chill merch, fun local experiences, even a trip to New York, Chicago, or L.A. Enter to win at CoorsLight.com slash take. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends August 15, 2022. Game ends September 6, 2022. 50 U.S. states and D.C., 21 plus only. Void where prohibited. For rules, visit CoorsLightSummer.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Coors Light. Today is Monday, July 18th, and Cameron Smith is your open championship champion, the Aussie with the mullet and mustache. What a tournament. What a back nine. I'm trying to say nice things right now because I had Rory and everyone knows I had Rory, but what a tournament. What a back nine. There it is. It was incredible. Cam's the first Cameron to ever win anything. As far as I'm concerned, I can't think of another winner that's a Cameron. Um, instead of subjecting you guys to my terrible Australian accent, I decided to actually just reach out to Cam Smith directly. So here's a little quote from Cam Smith, uh, exclusive to part of my take on winning the Open Championship. Well, thanks, mate. On behalf of my criminal ancestors who were kicked off this land hundreds of years ago, I'd like to humbly take this opportunity to tell the Queen of England to suck my dick. I hope her old ass sees this and has a heart attack. <laughs> Me, PFT, and Delhi are gonna rent a Winnebago and travel the world slamming cause lights and searching for treasure. Aussie, 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 thanks, pardon my take, love you guys and all the AWLs out there. Incredible, like, so well wow. said. <laughs> what a moment. I did, when he said that he wanted to figure out how many beers fit in the Claret jug, I was watching that live being like, I just want to hear PFT repeat that back to us. How many beers fit inside this, this <laughs> tremendous trophy right now? I reckon you could get a couple, maybe 13, 14 Always go cool as lights. Fantastic. Dude, he was insane. That was an insane back nine. What he, sh he shot a 30. He just, every putt was either in or like, you know, the, the course. Can we just talk about that course for a second? The fact that there are two, uh, they're shared greens just broke my brain for the entire afternoon. Like even, even the announcers at some points, they're like, oh, well, he's shooting it here. But that, you see that that flag over there that's the 13th hole or something what the fuck is this it's weird and sometimes if you hit a shot like closer to the other hole you end up better than if you hit a straight shot that comes up like a little bit short on a par four to the hole that you're supposed to be shooting at it's a bizarre course and it's crazy because watching on tv you'll see a player hit a shot that'll like run onto the green and it looks great but then the announcers are like oh he is in deep hell that poor twat and then every shot <laughs> right. that, that looks like it's shit the announcers are like Oh, poetic, heroic shot. It's yeah. like, wait, I don't, I do not understand Lynx golf. I love having it once a year on TV so I can, it, it will do like what you said. It'll break your brain and it'll be interesting to watch. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough for us, even as dimple heads as we are, it's tough for us to wrap our heads around this course. They would put shots 
like 30 feet away from the pin and the announcer would be like, that's a terrible spot. He's got six mounds that he has to go over. It's like, what the fuck? And, the, and then the green, like we said on Friday, I know it's not fact because it's obviously a historic golf course and very difficult. But the fact that some of these greens are like 100 yards long and everything is on there, like I want to play there because yeah. everything's on. I know that everything's not on because you can hit it and it, it could be like you have to chip from, you know, you're on the green, but you have to still chip or you have to putt it like 200 feet. But still, everything is on. The whole course makes no sense. It was awesome to watch. Great fucking theater. And Rory, you broke my heart. I may never get over this one. I actually think it's a great equalizer equalizer of a course i think that if guys like me and you played it against guys that are like i don't know jake and hank's level of golf i think the scores would be closer together than they would at at a normal golf course in the united states where you like have to hit the right fairway and have to hit like clean approach shots because it is it's crazy on on the 17th hole when cam smith hit his drive and as we know from talking to shane bacon he should have hit it onto the 18th tee box and then chipped mm -hmm. it over but he didn't he hit it and he was putting on his second shot and the announcers were like, that is a terrible drive. And he was putting, he was putting two on a par four. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he's, yeah, he's fucked on this one. And then he hit a great putt to within two feet. At that point, it was kind of his tournament to lose. I do feel bad for Rory because it felt like this was Rory's moment. It felt like everything was setting up given his history at that course. And it's probably his last time uh, being able to be like truly competitive at St. No. Andrews. No, no. At St. Andrews. No. No. He's 33. I mean, How often do they play there? It's like every four years. It's, or it's every five every, years. Every five yeah. years. So, no, so he's no, you're be, thinking Tiger. You're thinking no, Tiger. No, with Rory. Tiger's he, not ever, With Rory, he's going to be 38, no. and he's going to be slightly out of his prime. This was the last tournament. No. Yes, this was the last Open at St. Andrews for Rory in his prime. I think he'll be – I think he will absolutely be competitive at 38 as a golfer. Golfers golf forever. Okay, they're let's, fucking – they're ageless. Let's make a bet right now. Rory at St. Andrews. I don't, I don't think in – 2027, I'm putting him, he's not going to finish in the top five. I mean, that top five is very, like, you, competitive. Like, what, what is competitive, though? Like, Fine, he top can, 10. Okay. I mean, it, but 38 is not out of his, like, he still will be very good in five years. Tiger is done. That was it for Tiger. And we did have, like, the journey. It was, it was so set up for Rory. Not only, like, the fact that he's been the darling of trying to save golf and being the most outspoken guy against Liv. And then it's, you know, at St. Andrews. I don't know if you guys saw the story. Journalists were just coming everywhere when, the, when this story was written. How Tiger, when he was walking up 18 for the last time, Rory was on one and he tipped his cap to him. And mm -hmm. Tiger saw. And they mentioned it after. Tiger was like, yeah, that was a great moment. Like that... That was a moment if Rory had gone on to win the tournament, talk about passing the torch. Like that would have been a journalist wet dream for Rory to win that tournament. And he couldn't hit a fucking putt. He couldn't hit a putt. He like, all he had to do was hit a putt and he couldn't hit a putt. And I'm not saying that I could hit those putts, but I could have hit those putts it's, and he couldn't. Well, it's, it's not just him like missing putts. Cam Smith just couldn't, he couldn't miss. Yeah. He was, he was right. locked in. I think he had nine fewer putts. Or as Azinger said right after it was over, he's like, I think Azinger said like uh, Cam Smith said 19. had yeah, like 20 fewer putts than Rory did. And it's like, wait, that's that's just impossible. There's no chance that that stat is true. <laughs> he just he misread there, the one. <laughs> there was the stat, though, that, that popped up that was like total yardage of made putts. And Cam Smith was at like 90 or it might have been feet, whatever, feet probably. I'm thinking football. Football's back. It was like 90 feet and Rory was at like 27, which just tells you everything. Cam Smith was making the 25 foot putts and Rory was just two putting everything and having to get within five feet to then make it. And it just, you're right. Cam Smith, like as much as you want to say it was a meltdown from Rory, it really wasn't like he, he definitely could have made some putts to keep him. He had the lead. He could have made some putts. Cam Smith just played out of his fucking mind. Rory didn't even finish second. Yeah. So that's what's crazy on the 18th hole. Uh, Rory put his his first shot, what was it, like 20 yards short, and he had to try to chip up and down and get it in to force a playoff. But because he went after the pin, he didn't make his putt after that because he was trying to sink his chip. And that that fact alone cost him, like, I think $300,000. Whereas yeah. if he had just, like, yeah. put it close on a second try instead of going for the win. Um, I mean, obviously, when you're Rory, you've made a lot of money already, so you don't, you're not thinking about that calculus of the $200,000. 
Um, but the fact remains, like second place was 1.5 million, third place was nine point uh, or 933,000. It's actually PFT the way to properly say it now in golf terminology. Rory just was three hundred thousand dollars closer to signing with the Live Tour because yeah. all that money missed means that someday he might go and golf in Saudi Arabia. What were you going to say, Hank? You ha- you had Rory as well, which I'm now back to back majors where I had the second plate. Well, I guess he didn't finish second. The the guy who was felt like he was going to win it all and uh, it all fell apart. I also had I, I got to stop watching golf with my family because it's just like I had Paw Patrol on one TV, golf on the other, trying to sweat it out. Like just it was just a disaster, disaster in my household again, as Rory couldn't put together a putt. But what were you going to say, Hank? I was going to say Cam Smith obviously played out of his mind. But if you're Rory and you're leading leading the open and in the back nine, you only have one birdie. Cam Smith has six. If he just has two more birdies, he at least forces a playoff like he didn't necessarily choke, but he didn't he didn't deserve to win. Like he mm. didn't, he didn't play the back nine like a champion. I like that. Yeah. Hank. That's a great take. He didn't deserve to no. win. Uh, yeah. You get- it should have been at least a playoff. Like it, it, you go, you go one for nine birdies and Cam Smith gets six, like two, two more birdies from R- Rory and that and we're in a playoff. Rory, Rory played too comfortably. He was up three shots, I think at 10. And then he thought, okay, I, all I have to do is fairways and greens, like in 10 cup. And he didn't count on Cam Smith just and- sinking anything within 50 feet. And they started doing the the Rory package on the NBC where they started playing the Rory clips from when he was hitting, you know, golf balls into his mom's washing machine when he was 11 years old. They did the whole thing. They were like, this is his moment. This is his crowding achievement. What a what a moment for Rory. He's playing the best golf uh, of his life as heard first by pardon my take. And it was his tournament. And then Cam Smith, who is. The, the the problem is Cam Smith is objectively a cool guy. He's got a mullet. He's Australian. He looks like an average Joe, and he went out there and played his balls off. So, like, as much as I want to be mad about it, he was that he was that phenomenal that like I had to sit back and be like, "Holy fuck, this guy cannot miss." Do you think that that the fact that Rory is named Rory makes him more likable? Because I do think that that's a very sympathetic first name. Like, you can't hate a guy named Rory. Yeah, and the accent. I think accents always just soften everything. They play. Like, the minute someone speaks, they have an accent. You're like, oh, that guy's cool. I want to hang out with him. Yeah, I, I do love everything about Cam Smith. He, his hair, his shitty mustache, his height, his Australian accent. Like in my wildest dreams, I've been going as Cam Smith for Halloween every day of my life. He's a he's yeah. a cool guy, and it's it, it was cool to see him win. I don't like Cam Young. If we're gonna power rank our Cams, Cam Smith Hate won. Him. Cam Young. Distant, distant second. Way to stay relevant, baseball. He's sponsored by Major League Baseball. I love that. It's crazy. I love that. It's crazy. I, I can't get enough of it. Yeah. And he, um, yeah, the cams, one and two. I was like, I fucking hate all Camerons. And then someone pointed out, yeah, you do, because they just showed a picture of Duke's court. And I was like, yep. I <laughs> didn't even, I didn't even put that into my thought. Like, I didn't even put that in my brain. But yes, I do hate all Camerons. So fuck all Camerons for the rest of the life of my life and their life. What were you going to say, Hank? I also like how they they give out a silver medal to the top amateur, but like no gold medal or bronze medal. Like they just throw that in there. Oh, dude, yeah. that guy! Like here's, you just get the silver medal, but but that would imply that there's like a gold or bronze. But it's just like nope. That that Italian who won the low amateur, I love saying amateur. Um, and his Italian dad, he's Italian, and he was just crying, and he was just like fist pumping. He's just like, "That's my son," and he was crying. It was such a great moment. It's like, yeah, dude, that is your son. Yeah, way to go! Like that's, that's just fucking sports right there. I love it. That's that's the Borelli household right there for you. Italian yeah. and tears. That's what they do. So because we have a big J on the show, Jake, I'd like you to chime in. How much did the um, sports journalism world lose today by not having the Rory story? And like I said, I, I read the article. It was so funny that they did a whole article solely about Rory tipping his cap to Tiger as Tiger walked up on the 18th and like that they lost the, the journalists lost today, not as much as me and Hank, but journalists lost. Yeah, that definitely would have been nice. And I think journalists would have taken the opportunity to as well be like, look, you can still win a major and not go to live and still be successful. So screw you guys who went to live um, because they always just like emphasize doing what is quote unquote the right thing to do. So that was a missed opportunity for them as well. Well, under the live rules, <sighs> Rory would have won that tournament after 54 holes. 
That's true. He's kind of cut out that to, ticket. Well, he would have tied. To play he would have tied. Tour. Yeah, he would have well, tied. Max I, wouldn't have gotten cut, and then he would have won the tournament. Yeah, there's no cuts. I also love. So. I. It's got to suck so bad to be the Victor Hovlands of the world. I feel like that happens a lot in majors where there's like two guys, you know, the final pairing, and one of them just. Like we didn't even remember that he was he was tied for the lead going into the final round at the open because he just like he wasn't even a thought. He I didn't, I thought about him for the first three holes and then it was like, oh, yeah, that guy. I forgot that he was there. The moment was definitely too big for him. He's one of those guys that when he gets on the green, he walks all the way up to the hole and then stands with both of his feet on either side of the hole and just just feels the slope with his body yeah. for a little bit. That's the only thing I'll ever remember about Victor. Well, I even Victor Hovland, Hovland, Victor yeah. Hovland, HOV. The um, the shot of the tournament that almost was we almost got uh, an albatross or a super eagle. I don't know which one you want to call it, double eagle. I like calling it a super eagle. There was a shot Jessica that just bounced off off the pin and would have been a two on a par five, which is that's the rarest shot in golf, and that would have stolen the show right there. Yeah, it would have. There was also a guy who just had an eagle in. I assume it was for presentation or something but they showed a, a shot of the crowd right after cam won and he was just standing there with an eagle on his arm i was like that's pretty fucking cool like that's that's one of those ones that i assume that it's for the show but also scotland is just a totally different world where it might have just been like bring your own eagle like if you that's have an eagle you're allowed to bring it to the open championship yeah it's an emotional support eagle there was actually there was a bird show somewhere in the united states this weekend where they had a falcon re-exhibit and this dude brought his falcon out to the middle and there's a crowd of thousands watching him and he sends his falcon up to start flying and then he just waits and waits and he's like waving his hand up in the air he's like okay the falcon's coming back and he's second now and the falcon just decided like peace out fuck you guys i'm gone and just became (laughs) just became a wild bird again in the middle of the show so awesome I, i love it i love it free that falcon and then one last shout out to the claret jug guy who that's got to be the most pressure of any job ever. He has to engrave the Claret Jug like in the five minutes between the, the tournament ending and them doing the award presentation. I They showed him and he was just sitting there chiseling away. I like. Do you think he's ever made a mistake? Because yes. that's a lot of fucking pressure. For sure. I think the person that does the Stanley Cup names has that sort of pressure, too. And they definitely well, they make, have time. They definitely they have time. They make mistakes, though. That guy has definitely made a mistake before. And it was cracking me up because the camera angle that they showed of the guy in his little hut, they like stationed him in a shack somewhere on the course. And he's just like hunched over a table and he's got the chiseling tool. But it looks like it's a straw going into his nose. And he just looked mm-hmm. like he was just blowing lines backstage when the when the camera was on him. Which he might have needed to just to like focus on this one moment where like he 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 has basically an entire 365 day or 364 days where he just can chill. And then one day the most pressure in the entire world on his shoulder. Yeah, and he has to spell a name that's never been spelled on a major trophy before, Cameron. Yeah. I would I would have fucked yeah. up like all day long. I was I was mixing up Cam Smith and Cam Young when I was talking to people, and I was like, "Oh yeah, Cam Young is killing it right now." And then I have to remind myself, "Oh no, that's the bad Cam. That's the other Cam. That's the Cam that sucks." Yeah. What were you gonna say, uh, Jake? Yeah. So good news for Rory. Actually, next year the Open Championship is at Ro- uh, Royal Liverpool, and that's where he won it in 2014. Okay, so that doesn't help us at all. I'm just saying for his for his sake. Yeah, he's going somewhere where he's won before. <laughs> We're gonna pre- that's, we'll that's, pre-bet it. This is that Jake. Jake is go. always good at, Jake, at giving like the silver linings, and I just want to be like, shut the fuck up with that silver lining. Yeah. Bookmark this you're next the, year. You're the king of it, Jake. He's, there's he's been no there one before. There's no one who has a rosier outlook on life than you. In like just the worst times when I'm just sitting, just stewing by myself, just like like motherfucking everything. So I, I end up winning my bet today, but the way that I bet on golf sometimes is so stupid where I bet on like nine players before the tournament started. Then I bet on two more players after the first round. Then I forgot and I realized, oh, yeah, none of my bets that I put in on Thursday are going to hit at all. So then I just loaded up on Cam and put like a little bit on Rory for today. I checked my account. I exactly broke back even on the entire tournament. That's how bad. That's good. But he was like he was like plus eight hundred when I bet on him. That's how bad all my other bets were. That's a good tournament, and we also got robbed of uh, the Max Slam. Right? He didn't make the cut. 
That was sad. He got to watch Tiger go across the bridge, though, so good for him. I think that I if, guess. You, if you had asked Max truthfully, what would you rather have happened? You barely make the cut and you know you finish in like 40th place or whatever, or you get to play with Tiger on his last round at Sanders potentially and get to experience that moment. I think, I think Max is such a softy and such an emotional guy. He's like, you know what? That's a memory that's worth, that's worth more than any amount of money. And I kind of agree with him. Like that is an all time moment that he got to basically walk and stand right behind. Like he showed, he put up a picture on his Instagram that was, you know, Tiger going across the bridge and he's standing right there. That's there's only him and, and Fitzpatrick are the only two guys that were that close and were like that in the moment. Do you blame yourself at all for Max's performance, thinking that maybe there's an outside chance that the entire time he was thinking about Tiger Woods fucking his wife? No, no. I no, I think that I should, probably should have gone harder. I probably <laughs> should have gone harder. I think he, I should have been like I should have been way more graphic about it because because <laughs> he didn't. He clearly was still like wrapped up in the Tiger lore. I should have really just made Tiger such a detestable person to him that he was so focused that he beat his brains in. Instead, he was like happy to be with Tiger. So I didn't do my job. So hand up. I didn't do my job. I didn't go hard enough on the idea that Tiger wanted to fuck. Tiger probably wanted to fuck your whole family, Max. Every single member of your family. So even your dog. I should have said that before. Even your dogs. <laughs> I, think do I think multiple dogs. Yeah. So yeah, I, I should have said that. I should have gone really, really hard. Um, I, th that joke, by the way, I had a couple of people being like too far and I, I actually can't tell if they're saying too far, like that's offensive to max or too far because they're such tiger fans that they're like, that's not right to say that about tiger. I think it's I the th latter. I think people got mad because you were just too close to the truth. I think that you, I think you cut too <laughs> close to the bone and people were like, uh, yeah, it's uncomfortable. But goddamn, it's probably true. Like if, as they say, if, if you're taking flack, that means that you're over all the right targets, big cat. Yeah, it was it was essentially like what everyone's thinking, but no one wants to say out loud. I just said it out loud. The Tigers just eyeing up all of Max's family and Fitzpatrick's family for that. And actually Fitzpatrick's uh, adopted family in Boston, too. He wanted to fuck them all. That's just he, the Tiger way. Tiger would fuck each and every one of us if he had a half second of opportunity. If a hole presented itself to him, Tiger's swimming in it. Or if we were serving him pancakes at a Perkins. Mm -hmm. Especially that. Then it's on site. Then it's on site. Um, yeah, Tiger, that was, I guess that was sad watching him walk up. I, I though, I assume that Tiger's going to keep playing all the majors. So I feel like he's going to at least get to do that walk like six more times. But that might be stupid. But if I were him, I would just keep playing all the majors. And people will still, like, think about it. Tiger's in that spot now where his legacy is completely cemented. He's the greatest of all time. He can show up to a major. Oh, you don't think so, Hank? You think it's still it's Jack Nicklaus? Who's got more majors? Well, I mean, who played in more competitive era? How does Whose that impact that? I mean, LeBron's it's not, legacy? It's not That's the real question. You, you can only play when you play. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so Tiger's the second best golfer of all time, according to Hank. Um, Tiger fans, and go the, ahead. And the record books. He's, he's at hen underscore ease on Twitter uh, for any Tiger fans that want to go after him. What I was going to say, though, Tiger basically can show up to a major, and if he makes the cut, the story is about Tiger. Like, that's all he has to do. Everyone's just be like, oh, my God, Tiger's in. All he has to do is put one low round out there, and everyone's like, watch out for Tiger. That's a pretty cool spot to be in because, like, his reputation is so high that anything, anytime he plays, like, decent golf, everyone's going to lose their fucking mind, and rightfully so. Is, so his legacy is cemented, but is his brand cemented? That's the real mm. question we should be asking ourselves. No, the he brand, needs to go to the live. Big... He needs to go to live tour. He needs to he needs to conquer the live for that to happen. Tiger Woods on the prowl in Saudi Arabia. He would be arrested very quickly. Yeah, they wouldn't. I don't think that would work. Um, anything else before we do? Who's back? Any other sports stories from the weekend? Uh, Juan Soto is probably going to get traded. I've I've gone back and forth trying to figure out like, am I in denial about this? Have I reached the bargaining stage of this? And right now I'm still in denial. I think that the Nationals are going to make one more offer. And if they make an offer that's like $460 million or whatever, and he turns it down, at that point it's like, I don't know if that's worse because it's not like I can blame the team for cheaping out on it because they're giving him a shitload of money and it's not deferred money either like they did with Scherzer and Strasburg. Or they tried to do with Rendon too. This is straight up like, okay, here's a normal, gigantic 
baseball deal for you. You don't have to wait 20 years to collect all of it. And we can't blame the team for cheaping out at that point. But at the same time, it's almost a little bit worse because he's just saying, no, like I, no matter how much money you pay me, I do not want to play in Washington, D.C. for the rest of my career. So right. that kind of and, stings too. And at this point, it's like, okay, if he doesn't want to take that deal, then we'll just we'll have to trade him away, get a bunch of good players, hopefully, for him. And you know what? We won a World Series. So we'll always have that at least. Yes. And he is the rare case where I don't think any dollar amount is enough because you're you're signing him. He, I think he's 23 years old right now. And so I think he's I think he's got a couple more years of arbitration. <clears throat> And then it would be like 26, maybe 27, where he's a free agent. Like it's it is a very rare case where a lot of times in baseball, especially like 15, 20 years ago, guys would just get paid for past, you know, what they did in the past and not what they're going to be in the future. You're getting the future for him. And he is worth like every dollar. I actually saw someone set up like um, a, a dollar amount, like what each player is is worth to the franchise and like. It was like for the Dodgers to trade to the Nationals. And it was it was like nine players. It was like nine players mm-hmm. would be worth what what he can bring to the team. That's how fucking good he is. Yeah, he's he is worth every single penny. He's so fucking good. And I've just kind of I guess I've reached the point where I'm like, okay, it's probably better if we trade him. I don't want to trade him. I want him to be a nat for life. I want him to accept that deal and retire when he's 38 in DC. And I want to watch him play from my favorite team for the next like 14 years. That would be awesome. But the reality is if he doesn't take this contract and he just doesn't want to play in DC and you have to get what you can for him. And as it stands right now, he would get uh, three more post seasons uh, with whatever team that we would trade him to before he reached free agency. So he's still worth a lot right now. He's worth a lot in terms of trade. So um, I hope he changes his mind. Juan, listen to me. I'm, don't make me beg Juan. I will beg if that's what it takes, but listen, if you're going to, if you're going to go somewhere, please, please just get a, like a gigantic haul and make the Nationals competitive again because it stinks having a team that's this bad to root for. Yeah, but it is true. Like you should, you should be rooting for a trade because he could basically revitalize the entire farm system with just one guy. That's how right. good he is. You right. could, you could, you could basically set up your entire future with one guy. Um, all right, let's do who's back of the week, and then we'll get to Frankie Munez, and then we'll finish up with. Uh, Mount Rushmore with Billy's return before we get to who's back. If you haven't heard of whatnot, it is a live stream auction app where you can buy collectibles, comics, and really almost anything else. They bring businesses and people together through commerce where sellers can host live streams and engage connoisseurs like yourselves can bid in real time with live streams happening 24 seven. You never know what you'll discover. And now Barstool is whatnot's newest seller. We'll be going live twice a week on Whatnot, running live shows and selling never-before-seen auction items and Whatnot exclusives. Download the Whatnot app and follow the Barstool Sports account at Barstool Sports so you'll be the first to get notified when we go live. Use the link in the description to get $10 off your first purchase on Whatnot. This is going to be awesome. We're going to be uh, auctioning off a bunch of different things. We have collectibles and items up the ass at Barstool Sports, so check out Whatnot right now. The uh, Barstool is Whatnot's newest seller. We'll be going live twice a week on Whatnot. And like I said, running live shows and selling never before seen auction items and Whatnot exclusives. So use the link in the description, to get $10 off your first purchase on Whatnot. Do it right now. Download that Whatnot app and follow the Barstool Sports account. So you'll be the first to get notified when we go live. Okay. Uh, who's back of the week? Henry. Uh, my who's back of the week is extremely insensitive graphics oh yeah uh, and mm. mlb on fox yesterday it was yankees red sox in the bronx and coming back from commercial uh the mlb on fox team had a nice graphics package that was a nice aerial view of the uh site where the twin towers mm-hmm. were it's now a memorial there's two uh pools like where, pools, where the buildings were yeah pools where the buildings were and on this aerial view, they filled the two pools, their two big squares, with uh, logos of the Red Sox and Yankees. So just a nice little, you know, sometimes they do the Statue of Liberty. Sometimes they do Times Square. Uh, MLB on Fox decided to go with the uh, always fun and lighthearted 9-11 memorial. Yeah, it you was. Could p- you could have picked any other location, <laughs> probably in the world, but definitely in the United States. Any other space of land. And they went with that one. 
it it was shocking. I don't who who thought that was going to be a good idea? Like, because I'm usually not. Uh, whenever Twitter and and people get up in arms about something, I'm usually like, just chill out. Like, it's not the end of the world. This one was just more like, who the fuck thought that was going to be a good idea ever? Like, it wasn't well, it was even. Also- it wasn't like I was personally offended. I was more like, how the fuck did you not realize that this would would actually be offensive to to a lot of people? Yeah. And, and that's where it's like, they always are like, Oh, the intern that did this is getting fired. It's like, there's no way that for a Saturday night broadcast for Red Sox Yankees, that that's just like a, you know, intern, make some graphics. We're, we're not going to look at them. We'll just run them. Like that was the conversation probably went similar. Like ironically enough, like, you know, we always do the Statue of Liberty. Like what, what's some, what's something new we can do? Like what's, what's a new, what's the, what's the new space? And someone was like, what about the nine 11 Memorial? And someone was like, yes, that's Never it. been done. Go, go forward with that one. Yeah. Yeah, they could have done any other place. They could have done Three Mile Island. They could have done anything. You name it, just not that one location. Did you guys see though? Because then someone said they uh, like the same MLB on Fox that tweeted the. Did you see it was like the Devil Rays? It was a graphic from a few years ago, and I forget what the actual stats were, but it was like number of hits that this player has versus number of hits that this whole team has, and it was two bars going upwards with Devil Rays logos floating around them yeah yeah i remember like that it looked what? like it was it looked like the towers and the devil rays were the planes like it was it was one of those things where after seeing that it was like this is something weird is going on like this that this is too much of a coincidence jesus i'll send i'll send the graphic it, it, it was that one was oh what the fuck sorry i just got it, a weird update on my computer it was it was so it was so stupid that twitter started uh, marking it as sensitive material and blurring it, you know, when it's like you need to opt in, that's how stupid it was. That they, that Twitter was like, yeah, the Fo- Fox just put fucking graph baseball graphics on the where the twin towers went down. This shouldn't be seen. That's how fucking dumb it was. Yeah, good rule of thumb is if you're doing a national broadcast in sports, just don't mention 9 11 or make any reference to 9 11. There's really no upside to it whatsoever, unless it's George None. Bush's first pitch that he threw out. In Yankee Stadium, in which case, yes, I will watch that every chance that I get. Yes, uh, it was Tampa Bay Rays entire payroll for the past four years was two hundred thirty three million. Wander Franco's twelve year contract extension two hundred twenty three million. So it's two bars that are equally shit. the same size, and then there's two Devil Rays like floating around them at different heights. Holy shit! This is <laughs> wild. So oh yeah, they got God. MLB on Fox has some uh, some PR to do. Yeah, they got it. They got to figure this one out. They got to have a big meeting about this one. I also have another one, but I think one of you guys is going to talk about it. Yeah, so I wait. do. I'm I'm going to talk about it. Go ahead, PFT. Okay, my who's back of the week is SEC Media Days. It's this week, and SEC Media Days for the coaches are some of the best days. It's not going to be the same without having Spurrier around. It's been like that for the last couple of years, but that's always when Spurrier would. That was his time to shine when he just go out there and just make fun of every other fan base in the SEC. So I miss that still. But tomorrow we get Brian Kelly, who's probably going to have a a translator next to him uh, so that everybody can make sure that they understand what he's saying. And then Lane Kiffin is going tomorrow. But I I absolutely love SEC media days because it always stokes the rivalry. And I'm sure this year we're going to get some some content between Nick Saban and and uh, and Jumbo Fisher. And it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna be incredible. Jimbo's gonna be like ready to slap him in the face, uh, and then yes. who knows? Who knows what Nick Saban's gonna say if he's gonna take the high road or not? Lane Kiffin's always fun. Brian Kelly's gonna be fun just because he's brand new. Um, so yeah, SEC media days are back. I can't wait to see because that means that football is back. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I'm sure Lane or uh, Jimbo and Nick Saban are gonna get like Greg Sankey's gonna put them in a hotel suite and just be like, you guys. Don't say a fucking word. Both of you guys like are in the doghouse with me because that's how the SEC always does this shit. That's why they're that's why they've ascended to where they are is Greg Sankey is like probably the the best commissioner in any sport, in any like league, in anything. So um, we won't get the fireworks, but there will be the tension there that we want to see. There'll be the tension and also just the coaches that are in the SEC. Every one of them. It's it's a must watch like Mike Leach on an open mic. That's appointment yep. television right there. Yeah, he'll just go forever. All right, my who's back, I think this is what Hank was alluding to, is LeBron. Um, he played in the Drew League. I actually tuned in. It was um, a dude holding his cell phone in, like, the back row, and they had it on the NBA app. 
I tuned in for a minute. LeBron cooked some guy and then missed a three. And I was like, I've seen enough. That's exactly what I want to see. Um, Cause I know that I'm, I'm sure he had some like crazy highlights, uh, but it was crazy that like on a Saturday afternoon, uh, everyone was furiously trying to get on the NBA app, which it just kept on like shitting out on me. But there was it was quite literally a guy with his cell phone, just just videotape like half of the screen was just the fans in front of him. But I guess that just tells you what LeBron does. He's uh, he shows up to the Drew League and that's what happens. I, I would imagine his Nike sponsorship. They're probably not so happy because the Drew League is sponsored by Adidas. Someone should point that out. Well, probably a lot of me, money lost. Explain to me like I'm an idiot. What is the Drew League? There's all the, yeah, California Summer League. Yeah, uh, there's, it's in California. There was a few years ago. I, t- there was like memories that came up because it was like when Kobe played. I, I remember this. And uh, I think it was Brandon Jennings got mad because he wasn't from California. Like it used to be a super, super like L.A. only uh, just like pickup game. And obviously like – during the lockout, a lot of NBA players played in it, and that kind of blew it up. But it's it's just like a summer league uh, that like NBA players will occasionally play in. Obviously, when the lockout happened, they were playing in it like every day. But it's just like a LA elite pickup game. Yeah, there's there's certain ones. I think there's one in New York as well, and they're they're basically like some NBA players. Like Demar Derozan was playing in it. Um, and then well, he's from just, LA. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying like he was playing in it yesterday. Like there's NBA players who play in it, and then like very good guys who were good in college who might play overseas just to you know keep sharp. And the Kobe one was awesome when he hit that game winner, and like everyone just mobbed him. And LeBron just wants to be Kobe, so that's why he. I mean, he had two NBA. It was him and it was him and DeRozan. They won by two. Like that's that's tough. <laughs> and was, and De- uh, DeRozan probably carried him if we're being honest. Was Kyrie going to play? I saw that there was talk he would he would show up this year. Kyrie was at – so there was rumors that Kyrie was going to play because he was at – I think one of his former coaches is now an assistant coach for the Lakers, and he was at hmm. his summer camp, like, doing drills and stuff. So that's they why I, I saw play today. Stuff. Yeah. I saw well, he was going to play. That was just oh. Kyrie just, like, just didn't show up. But yeah. he was supposed to play. That's weird that Kyrie would do that. I saw a couple of highlights of dudes trying to guard LeBron, and they were trying the hardest that they've ever tried at basketball in their entire lives because they're like, this is my moment oh, yeah. to shut LeBron down. Then LeBron would just hit him with a casual spin move, and then well, walk away, and the guys would be like, damn it. They, they should know, though, that if they ever do anything good against LeBron, it will just get erased from the internet, like that last time when he got dunked on at that camp. And then it By just, a high schooler. Yeah, and then it got erased from everywhere. But yeah, Adidas, shout out Adidas, sponsored the Drew League. Nice little pub for, pub for them. I also saw LeBron uh, dapped up LeVar, which was nice. Because you know LeVar was like, I could have fuck, I could kill you one-on-one if I wanted they, to. They should let LeVar play in the Drew League. Imagine the ratings just one-on-one LeVar versus LeBron. Would be so great. I'd watch that. I would watch. Like this is the time right now when we we just fell off a, cl- a sports cliff with the Open Championship being over. Give us Lavar versus LeBron one on one, and we'll just take whatever tiny little highlight that Lavar has or whatever minor. Like LeBron dribbles <laughs> the ball off his foot one time. Boom! That's the highlight for the entire tournament. <laughs> yeah, Lavar. That would be the easiest. That would be eleven zero. Oh, I, that minimum. would be eleven zero. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Jake, finish us off with who's back. My who's back is the booth. Fortunately, I'm back this weekend. ESPN yes. Plus, Saturday night. Uh, we have Redwoods, Atlas, and Whip Snakes Chaos. So thank you to ESPN and the PLL for giving me another chance. I'm excited. Let's go, Jake. Yes. You've yes. done a great yeah. job in the booth so far. I keep waiting to, to pounce on a mistake that you make, and you're not giving me any opportunity. You're pro's pro. <laughs> thank no, you. Don't jinx it. But yeah, two more games Saturday night. I'll be in Fairfield, Connecticut. And yeah, please tune in. Does that make you nervous, Jake, knowing that we're watching and we're like, if you screw up just even a little bit, we are going to make it the biggest deal ever? We're just going to tune this out and see what happens on Saturday. Okay, we're now we'll be tuning in. you. Yeah, yeah. So you just want me to screw up? No, 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 no. maybe, no. <laughs> no, yeah, just say bit. no, PFT. We know we do. No, 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 no. What we're saying is if you do screw up, we will make it like you thought that we were hard on Tom Brenneman. Like we're going nuclear on you. Yeah. Let's just hope it's something, it's a mistake that we can joke about after. And it's nothing like, oh no, 
Yeah, like maybe you have a cheesesteak before the game with lettuce and tomatoes on it, and then you have to yeah. just run out of the booth real quick and crap yourself. No, that yeah. would be too much. And let me just say to all the AWLs, the, the, the offer still stands. If you don't watch this, we will come and murder you. And um, also, you can help us out by nitpicking everything Jake does and sending it to us. <laughs> Fair enough. The All-Star <laughs> game happened this weekend. They had a rule after you guys. Yeah. The bonus ball. Yeah, cool. yeah, I love it. Did What was Worth the final two. score? What was the final score? I believe the- it was I believe it was thirty three to thirteen. So it was it okay. Was so it worked. Out. So the over probably hit. So more points. That's all you need in an All Star game. All Star game should always the over should always hit in the All Star game. I'm not just saying that because I lost betting the over in the WNBA All Star game last week. But every All Star game the over should hit. That should, should just be a rule. It should be like a free bet for everyone who watches the All Star game. Everyone wants to see points. No one wants to see defense. Every yeah, All-Star game yeah, should have a, a bunch of points and then like one old guy in his last year that retires and gets a big curtain call. That's all I yes. want out of an All-Star game. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's get to our interview. And then on the other side of the interview, we have the return of Billy Football with Mount Rushmore. Before we do the interview, PFT, you had a, a sponsor. That's right. Yeah, before we get to Frankie Munoz, I want to talk to you guys about Shady Rays. We love Shady Rays. Shady Rays sunglasses offer an industry best combination of fit, style, and performance without the big brand price tag. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. So that means if you lose or if you break your pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair. Wear with confidence. Wear it at the lake. Wear it at the beach. Listen, it's it's sunglasses season. And if you're anything like me, that means that it's sunglasses losing season and you probably go through four or five pairs of summer. Guess what? With Shady Rays, if you lose them or if you break them, they're going to send you another one. If you don't love them, you can also exchange for a new pair or you can return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. The team always has your back. I've actually really enjoyed the last few years since Shady Rays come on board. When we go out somewhere and we see the AWLs and they're rocking Shady Rays, I see them in the wild all the time. They're great sunglasses. Everybody likes them. And again, they do have that best in the industry warranty. They're lost and broken replacement guarantee. Exclusively for our listeners, they have the best deal of the year. Go to ShadyRays.com slash PMT50 for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. You heard me right. That's 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. All you have to do is go to ShadyRays.com slash PMT50. And now here's Frankie Munoz. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. I'm not even going to say actor. He's he's a race car driver. He's a truck driver, <laughs> right? Like, should we just do it that way now? It's Frankie M- Munez. Yes. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been fortunate to do a, a lot of different things in my life, but but my my main focus is racing. Like, yeah. that's, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to get to kind of look back at my life and, and think of the things I've gotten to do in the past and where I really want to focus my future. And that's where I feel the most at home. But there's also a weird element I, I, we were just talking about, I have, a, I have a 15 month old son and I feel like most people when they have a kid slow down yeah. and want to do less dangerous things. Yeah. Me, it was more, I wanted him to be able to watch me going after, like grow up with me going after my dream. Right. You know what I mean? And the passion and the hard work and, and rather than me just sitting at home, you know, or being some lame actor, I'm yeah, like, no, yeah. no, I gotta, I gotta work for well, this. I want you to, you know. I think you're not a lame actor, but is that so... Obviously, you know, it's great to have you in here. The people will know you as an actor, but are you hoping that someday you're known more as a race car driver or truck driver? It's truck, right? Well, uh, yeah, let's let's back up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, motorsports in general, I I started racing in 2005. Um, uh, I was doing open wheel stuff like uh, IndyCar, Formula One. Um, I raced in Champ Car Atlantics. I got really badly hurt in 2009. I broke my back, pins put in my hand, broken ankle, broken everything. Um, And always thought I'd go back racing. I always knew I had, in my mind, unfinished business, but the injuries took a pretty long time to heal, so I missed the next season. And then life takes over. You know what I mean? I I, I joined a band, I was was on tour, um, and always said I'd go back racing. But the years just keep passing by. I'm 36, I'm not getting any younger. It's a young man's sport. If I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it. And I want I wanna I wanna be able to look back and go, you know what? I accomplished what I was going after you know, right. going after. Yeah. And uh and I felt like this was what I wanna do. I like I said, I raced open wheel stuff. I love the idea of racing in, in NASCAR. 
Um, so this, I love that idea for you. Yes, I want that <laughs> yes, to happen. For you. <laughs> yes, so, let's do that. So this past this past uh, couple months, I've been uh, doing a lot of stock car stuff, pro late models, with the with the intention, yes, that I, I want to race trucks, I want to race in the Xfinity series, ARCA, NASCAR. But I'm I'm kind of I'm saying motorsports in general because. Uh, I, I just want to race cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to be a race car driver. Yeah, you know I want to go. I want to go fast. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Awesome. What, what's the fastest you've ever been? Uh probably two oh five. Damn. Yeah. Uh, you know it's funny the the tracks that you go really like the really high speed tracks actually f- don't feel as fast as some of the the smaller tracks. Like I'll be going hundred miles an hour. You're on the limit. That's when you feel like you're going fast. You, right. you, know, you have the car sideways, so you you know it. It's not just about like that top speed, but yeah, you know, I, I did the ARCA test at Daytona at the beginning of this year. You know, you're going 190, 200 miles an hour, but it doesn't, you, you, you want to go faster. Like, right. The, uh-huh. you know, it's just a big, big so place. Big. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's um, crazy. It's all relative. Is, uh, is speed addictive? You know what's funny? I feel like once I became a race car driver, I became, I actually go a lot slow, like in my, in real life, mm-hmm. like in the car, in my cars, I don't want a sports car anymore i ride motorcycles but like i've gone from having super sport bikes to like cruisers because like there's nothing like the speed of being in a race car or like driving on the limit with other people in the street i'm just going to get in trouble you know what i mean but i don't know if if speed is necessarily addictive as much as the competitive like i'm super competitive i want to win i want to beat you you know what i mean and i think that's more addictive you know what i mean like the the working hard and going and faster those results. than the other guy right yeah going faster than the other guy better yeah. than just like going fast if we're racing general. smart cars you know what i mean uh-huh. and going 50 miles an hour like i just want to beat you that's that's what is addictive not right, necessarily yeah. the just going fast it, cool. it, it, your career is crazy because you know we're, we're the same age as you so we remember malcolm in the middle we mm-hmm. remember watching it i think there's a, a preconceived notion with child actors where it's like oh a child actor like that's got to suck when they grow up <laughs> and i love but i love you can tell me i'm way off i love that you are very open with no my life is pretty sweet i get to do everything yeah. i want to do <laughs> well i i know there's most child actors yes do have a ginormous decline right me i've always just as cheesy as it sounds i've gone after my dreams like i and I look back and I go, I'm lucky. Right. You know what I mean? A lot of people look and I go, oh, like, ugh. I know so many actors, child actors or even adult actors who, for some reason, they get on these TV shows. They have all this success, but they're miserable. Right. And they want, I want off the show. I want to do movies. It's like, you don't understand how lucky you are and you have it because it's going to end. Eventually, it's going to end. So me, I went from acting, I wanted to go into racing, I wanted to push it 100%. So I kind of left the acting world, did that, I got to do the band, I've owned a bunch of businesses. I've been fortunate to do everything I've wanted to do and I and I, I know I'm lucky, you know what I mean? Right. But in that same sense, I've always felt like I was running out of time. So I, I a lot of my passion and me going after all these things is I wanna live the most fulfilled life I can, you know what I mean, for me. You know, I want right. to look back and go like, man, I didn't waste any time. Like, I got to do everything I ever dreamt of, and and uh, you know, hopefully, in doing those things, I'm 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 being the best I can be. I, I'm doing the best I can be with them. I'm not doing this stuff as a hobby. Like, I, I don't want to be a race car driver just because it's fun. I want to do it because I I want to I want to be the best. I want right. to win a championship. I, right. you know, I want to win races, and I want to be remembered as a great race car driver as well as a great actor or, mm-hmm. or whatever. I, I'm not ashamed of anything I've done in the past. You right. Know? That, um, that well, maybe does, a few things. Well, that but. does have to be a weird feeling too. I, I you know, mm. it it's got to be bizarre to be able to watch back your acting and like be like that's when I was growing up and like my formative years and it's all on display. It's not <laughs> obviously it's scripted, so it's not reality yeah. television. But still, like to look back and be like, whoa, that's like I can't imagine the the mind fuck if any of us were able to look back <laughs> yeah. and see like us grow up on screen. Yeah. It's got to be a little weird. It is. You know, it's uh, uh, people ask me all the time. They go, you know, are you sad that you didn't get to go to high school prom or these things? And I, I was like, well, no, I got so many incredible opportunities. And, you know, I was at the Academy Awards. Right. You know, I was at the right. Emmys. You know, I was uh, at the Playboy Mansion when I was 15. You know, that's pretty sick. <laughs> Way cooler than prom. Yeah. Trust me. Yes. Um, yes. So 
I, I, I don't know. You know, it was. It was That's one, like when Playboy was like. <laughs> oh, that, it, it was when it was Playboy. legit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. That is all. You could have just said that. No, yeah. Not this like, word no problem, search no, bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Play, Playboy mansion. You got to hang out the grotto yeah. all, all the time. Um, <laughs> so you know, I I look back and I go like, no, I was completely lucky. I don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? Um, but. But no, I'm sorry. There's I, no, yeah. You it, touched on something real quick that was, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people in Hollywood, especially, um, are just, they don't know how to be happy. And, right. Yeah. And <laughs> just because they're being successful at whatever show is on, if they're, you know, at the top of the A list, if they're getting invited to all the good parties, they're still not really happy. They're just I, like, I don't know what that is. I like, I've thought about it a lot because I like, I have, it took me, I think, stepping away to, you know, because when you're in it, like, it's just your life, right? Like, when you're filming a show you, every day, it, it's just what you do. You know what I mean? And and maybe you don't take it all in at that time because you think, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what I do. This is what I do. I go to these shows. I go to this premiere. I have to fly here. I have to do that. And it just becomes what you do, right? But it took me, when I stepped away, I look back and I go, wow, that was awesome. And if I ever have an opportunity again or w whatever I'm doing – I'm going to take full advantage of that and know that like, this is a great experience. I want people to leave who I work with who go, man, he's a great guy. He puts a hundred percent effort. You know, I, I never complain. I don't want to go home. You know, like I, that's how I want to be remembered. You right. know what I mean? And, but I feel like it took leaving to see that. I think that's right. a, that's a you know healthy I mean? perspective to have too. Yeah. And if you're in it for too long, then your entire self-worth gets based on what other people are saying about you. Yeah. And well, then think, the second they turn on you, it's like it, it crushes you. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of child actors end up going down a bad path is you're also so used to your life being like everybody, you know, giving you whatever you want or doing whatever you want. And there's the, like a, there's like the endorphins are a high that come with that. And then it goes away mm -hmm. and they need something to fill that void and they you know. Cocaine. It, well, cocaine. It, yeah, 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 yeah. It's cocaine. That's the point. No, but it's. I think it's also like the the pressure the the public puts on child actors, where it's like if they don't become adult actors, it's always like what happened to that person? Yeah, and it's like what happened to Frankie Muniz? Well, he's living an awesome life and he's going after all his goals, yeah. and that doesn't compute to a lot of people. I never people. I remember being you know, 17, 18, 19, I was on Malcolm still. And everyone would always be like, you know, how are you going to make that transition to adult actor? And, and my answer used to be like, well, when I turn 18, I'm legally an adult. If I'm still acting, I'm an adult actor. Like, I don't know. I don't know. There's no like science behind it. Right. right. But in that same sense, I, I never let that change decisions I made or, or affect decisions or things that I, I wanted to do or, was like, well, I have to make sure I make the right decision to get me to be an adult actor. If it works out, it does. I think one weird thing for me is I was in the height of my acting career, like on the show, and I decided to like say, hey, I'm not going to do any more. I want to go race. I want to do this. I want to focus right. on this. I want to, you know, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it 100%. And I don't know if a lot of people know that. You know what I mean? Right. I, so maybe in some eyes, they think that I, I, failed as an actor or I didn't make it you know what I mean but right. in the end like I know I'm happy with the decisions I made you know what I mean yeah I, I can't help but think that at times where I go like what if I did stay like where would I be or what would have happened right you know what I mean um but I think me as a person the best thing I could have done is what I did I think right I think it's I mean? a healthier choice that you made like a, yeah. a, a much much better for your mental health to do something like that than to like be wrapped up in something that you might not have as like a long-term goal. Then you're just like fighting, trying to be happy. Yeah. Right. You know, you're always fighting against the possibility of, of being upset. But I guess you, uh, the only career decision I would say that I would vehemently disagree with is becoming a Clippers fan. <laughs> yeah. Because you are the only Clippers fan well, in the world. Penny Marshall's passed away. So, and Billy Crystal, right? I think, is maybe Yeah, the but he only goes one. to the big games. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's not a real one. You are the world's Jimmy only Tatro. Clippers fan. Huge Clippers fan, our friend Jimmy Tatro. Yeah. Well, see, enormous Clippers fan. I I became a Clippers fan because I played like NBA Live '94 on Super Nintendo or whatever it was, and the Clippers were the only team that I didn't mind deleting all the players because I didn't know who any of them were. <laughs> and I it was like I put myself, my dad, and of course yeah. I was '99 everything. My uh -huh. cat was a player, you know what I mean? Like so. I, so then I was like, well, I'm gonna be a Clippers fan, right? I grew up in New Jersey. Is that really? Know? That's really the story. How that's you really amazing. Story. That's awesome. And so. 
I, I take it back. I'm glad you're a Clippers fan. Yeah. So then story. in 97 or whatever was like the first time I went to LA. Like I went to a Clippers game at the sports arena and there was like seven people there. And I don't know. I just, I loved, I loved it. Like I loved, even though they didn't win often, I loved having a team that I supported and, and, uh, you know, but I spend a lot of money going to games to be miserable. Yep. And I, that's one of the things I, I look back and I go like, wow, I literally paid money to be yeah. angry. Yeah. Like, every that's day. That's sports fandom, though. Yeah. Like, that's every, I'm, like, there's only one winner every year. Yeah. I'm a Washington <laughs> yeah. Commanders fan. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, but you did yours by choice, though. Yeah. That's the difference. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just kind of had to be because I grew up around it. You're yeah. like, you know what? Yeah, the Clippers, that seems, seems like a good investment. Though, if you saw that I have in storage bins of like, Everything that I could find, because you rarely could find Clippers stuff. Right. You know, like if you go, you know, you go to sports stores, nobody had Clippers stuff because nobody bought it. But if I found it, I bought everything. I have every Clippers item I could ever find for like twenty years. <laughs> so whose side did you take in the Chris Paul Blake Griffin saga? <laughs> um, Answer carefully. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, one I, of them's I, a friend I don't of ours. Be, well, both of them are friends of mine. Okay. <laughs> but one who's a no, you better a guy? Side. Who's a better guy? I don't know. Be careful. See, I don't want to be put on a spy. Like, I, I, I don't, just be honest. Yeah, but be careful. So one A, one B. Be careful. I was a big Blake Griffin. Right, yeah, there we go. Good okay. answer. Uh, good choice. Good job, Frankie. <laughs> I live in Phoenix now, though. You know what I mean. So like, uh -huh. I, I, I'm not a, necessarily a Suns fan, but I, I root for the city. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah. I, I want, you know, and obviously, you know, Chris, Chris Paul's Paul, done yeah. great with the with the Suns. Oh, has so. he? I guess. Well, I, like seating wise, I mean, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Want anything <laughs> of note? Yeah. Well, better than the Clippers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are, you got to be excited about this year, though, right? Like John Wall, this is the year, right? Kawhi maybe coming back. Maybe. I've said this is the year every year since 1994. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I, I don't know. You know, like you know, to be honest, I'm I'm going to be 100 percent in front of you with you guys. I have not watched a basketball game. In maybe three years. Oh wow! So uh, to be honest, I'm just I'm just being. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what happened because like it was literally my life. Like all I cared about was the Clippers and well, basketball. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, you were a Clippers fan. That's yeah. probably the answer. That probably. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, why don't I like this? Well, they anymore? became like super trendy too. Yeah. Like, they kind of became like cool. That's yeah. not as cool to be a Clippers fan. When they traded away Blake Griffin. Yeah. You stopped watching basketball. That's loyalty right there. I respect that. Yes. Yeah. That, that's I love it. that. That's it. 100%. Um. Well, the other thing I I was wondering your your Twitter is is very funny. Because I think it's well, just like you know, it'll pop up every now and then. You'll go viral. Um, I do love the one. The one time I, I have this, uh, someone said, I don't even know if you remember this. Someone said your acting is just awful. Sorry, but it is. And you replied, Yeah, but being retired with forty million at nineteen has not been awful. Good luck moving out of your mom's house before you're thirty-five. I just love that. Look, sometimes you you know people. The internet is filled with hate. Yeah. Right. And people sling mud. Because they can. Yep. And I never was, but every once in a while you have to punch back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You got to so, slap some people around. I was like, just you know let what? them know. You know what? You're right. Yeah. Yes. My acting is awful. <laughs> but you know what's not? So I don't know. Sometimes I, I just had to punch back. Yeah. Well, is it objectively yeah. awful if you're getting paid for it? Somebody thinks it's good, right? Well, look, I, I've never, I've never claimed to be a good actor, right? I, yes, I was an actor. Mm -hmm. I did what they told me to do. I said what they said, told me to say. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. You, you, sure. you have, yeah, right. And the, the other one I wanted to read to you that's very funny is you, you said, uh, you know, when you look in the mirror and realize you'll never be as good looking as Zac Efron and you'll always be Frankie Muniz looking motherfucker. Imagine being Frankie Muniz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I know where I stand. Right. You know, I was never I was I wasn't a heartthrob. I was I was not in a lot of teen beat magazines. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, I was a funny, awkward kid and. It worked for for Malcolm in the Middle. Yes, yeah. yes. I've got a couple more examples here. This is uh -oh. this one's a little darker. Maybe you can explain this one. I have about four dreams a week that I get shot in. Last night I could actually feel the burn of bullets as they entered my chest and heart. Do you still like constantly dream about getting shot? I do actually. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not like a dream person, right? Where like some someone I'm sure can tell me that that means something is haunting me in my life or whatever it may be. But honestly, like I have those dreams all the time and they're awful that sounds yeah it sounds terrible yeah like yeah. four times a week L do you have any enemies i'm sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i mean that, that apparently i would be afraid to fall asleep if i were you yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah it's it, it's weird i honestly like i i i wake up all the time with that like the feeling of just like oh good thank thank goodness i woke up yeah mm -hmm. 
Um, you might just have sleep apnea. Maybe. That's I've, yeah. I've always heard that like if you if you experience something painful in your sleep, you can just write it off as sleep apnea. Uh, and yeah. like, go get a mask and then you stop dreaming about that yeah. weird stuff. Maybe. I on it I I really truly feel like I know what it feels like to be shot. That's crazy. I mean, I don't shoot me. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to like find you out. You already know. Yeah. yeah. But like <laughs> Wait, that's bad. that's nuts. Yeah. What uh you you also, I mean, your your career has been fascinating. You you're in the olive oil business? Yeah. Uh, still? Not any, it, not anymore. We we sold the company. Okay, cuz um, I was going to say, did you just do that so people could be like he might be in the mafia? Cuz that's like <laughs> that's yeah. all you hear like olive oil business. What what made you do that? To to be honest, my wife um we were looking at businesses that she that she could be have or or do and we randomly had gone to this olive oil company and they were like it's for sale and i was like i'll buy it <laughs> okay <laughs> another one of those on a whim like I, I i i knew i loved business i wanted to be involved like i love kind of the behind the scenes um aspect of, of businesses and it was something that she was passionate about and we did it and then it ended up becoming like a huge passion of mine like I, I loved uh um everything about the business and and olive oil and the, and the benefits and the science behind it and we sourced from 14 different countries um we got everything tested by a third party to make sure it was the highest rated olive oil the freshest in the in the country and we became one of the biggest olive oil companies in the u.s and you quickly. sold it for a profit so oh yeah that's crazy i mean it we it, it's one of those things we look back at now we go like that was pretty cool but like in it it was way more work than you could imagine right you know yeah. what i mean like it was it was definitely it's not an easy business like, right it's very time consuming and and uh she had gotten pregnant and uh a couple came up to us and they were like we we love your business like would you ever want to sell it and i i set up a stupid number and it was there as a week later <laughs> that's you know? amazing that's great. so i mean I, we do miss it you know we miss having a business um but at the same time, like we had the baby, and, and now you, know. you can go buy another business exactly. if you want. Yeah. So, so at the time when you were selling olive oil, did people know like this was your olive oil company? I mean, I I was there pretty much every day. We had a, we had a storefront, um, and there were times where people would be like, "Why are you here? Like, why are you? Oh, oh, you're selling olive oil now." I'm like, "Yeah, but I I mean, it's my I own it. It's um, fun. <laughs> yeah, and and I and I enjoyed it. Like." It was one of those things that like that was what I wanted to focus on and and I wanted us to be as big as we could and we worked really really hard at it and that's just kind of what I've I try to do with everything I do and yeah. you know especially especially now with, with motorsports again. This is this is great cuz I like you really do have a fascinating career. I also there's like a moment in time that some of our listeners probably won't realize but like like I said we're the same age as you. You were on the first ever episode of Punked. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, yeah. Like this is like this is this is shit that should be remembered forever because punk was a huge, huge, huge cultural yeah. phenomenon. You were, it was, you know, at the nadir of your like acting. So what what do you, he what they do? What, how were you punked? I I did a movie with a Sean Levy, um, who now created and directs Stranger Things and all that. And Ashton had did a, mo a movie with him as well. And and they called and said we want to pitch you a, an idea for a movie. So I met them at the Standard Hotel, and. I had a big car collection then, and uh, I think they were assuming I was going to drive. There's, there's a big backstory behind it, but uh, anyway, I, I, I show up at the hotel, and Dax, who wasn't Dax then, or right. I, I didn't know who Dax he was. He's just a guy. He right. was like he's like Ashton's buddy. Yeah, he's like, I'm Ashton's assistant. He's like, uh, the parking lot's full, park across the street. So I, he helps me get across the street, park my car, go in, have the meeting with Ashton and Sean Levy, and... And a bunch of some weird things happened that they didn't show, like in the in the hotel. That I think that they thought I would like question, but it was L.A. You know, right. what I, mean? I was like, oh yeah, weird you shit. Know, people yeah. are fighting. It's fine. Um, and I go out, and my the valet said that Dax can't, wanted me to move his my car, and he took it. And like, so it was a 1956 Porsche Speedster. It was a very like a car I never drove and never parked, but I was late, and I don't know, I don't know why I brought it. Um, and I freaked out and I had left my phone in the car, which worked great for the episode. Right. Cause then I'm calling my phone Dax answers. Right. You know, right. I'm like, dude, you're in my car. You know, it was this whole thing, but that's but yeah. amazing. Yeah. It was me and Justin Timberlake on the first, the first episode. Yeah. That's incredible. I think all you have to do on that show is not like flip out and threaten to assault somebody and then everybody will love you. Yeah. I think it's it was, like, I think it was the first time like I 
like said a bad word on TV. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, started cursing out the valet guy. You know? What yeah, I mean? they were they were probably like, that's awesome. That's a yeah. perfect soundbite. It's like Frankie Munoz being like, you motherfucker. Yeah, like, we got him. <laughs> but then they they end up. My car drives into the parking lot, and Ashton gets out, and he's like, you got punked. I'm like, where's the asshole who stole my car? You know, yeah. I didn't even understand the, what yeah, they were talking about. Because punk wasn't a thing. It wasn't it's a show. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh how'd you find God. it? He's like, you'll understand what that means in five years. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's perfect. That's so so funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. like the like that was again. That, that's something people probably won't. Some people won't understand how big punk became. Oh no, that and was how big you were. Yeah. And all of that coming together. That was a that was a huge huge show. Yeah, That's you incredible. and Justin Timberlake first punked. I, I do have a couple Malcolm in the Middle questions. Okay, just because like Big Cat said, we did grow up watching it. Yeah, um, and you've probably heard this one a million times. But Brian Cranston as as the father on the show. That yep. pe- a lot of people don't realize that when Breaking Bad finished, he included like a spoof throwaway scene of like uh, in I think it was a DVD box set being yeah. like. All of Breaking Bad was just a dream that I had on Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but working with him as an actor, there's clearly always been something incredible about the way he goes about his business and like being on that show. Uh, he really helped to make that show. Was he was he like intimidating at all to work with, or how was that for you as like a young actor working with somebody that was so like great at their profession? You know how I said that I want people to work with me and have nothing but positive things to say. I learned that from Brian. Honestly, the most amazing human alive. You know what I mean? He showed up to work 100% professional. Put He'd be off camera. You know, some people throw away their lines. He did the same performance um, every time and just a, the nicest guy. So as far as me, like, you know, when we were on Malcolm, it was, he was Brian Cranston, but he wasn't, I think, the Brian Cranston that right. Brian Cranston is now. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but I'm so happy for him, the success he's had since. I mean, Breaking Bad was insane, amazing. He's such a good actor, but, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say intimidating because he really became like a father figure to me. Like, Mm -hmm. honestly, he's still to this day, the show ended 16 years ago. He still calls all the time to check in. Brian Cranston calls me. That's cool. You know what I mean? That's very cool. Because he cares. And that's, I, I, I always remember that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I haven't talked to anyone else from the show. Oh. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Print that. I'm kidding. <laughs> Fuck they you, do it. They don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Actually, I, that's the exact right answer that I wanted to hear. Yeah. No, he's like, so cool. You, you have an impression of people. You never know what they're like until yeah. you actually sit down and know them for a while. But he's always struck me as somebody that, like, everyone has positive things to say. Yeah. And working with him closely at that time, must have been, it must have been really interesting to see him, like, because that's the role that I think took him from being, you know, like a, 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 a kind of mid name yeah. for uh, TV actors, and it like elevated him because on a show that was kind of it was sitcommy, but it was you know single camera, it was a little bit different. Uh, but it took him and elevated him to really like the top tier of television actors, which just launched him into a different stratosphere. Yeah, what's funny is they, when we did the pilot, they didn't have him cast until the day we started filming. Like it, it, like they couldn't find, and they're like, oh, I guess it'll work. And then they were gonna write that character kind of out of the show. Mm-hmm. But Brian was so good, you know what I mean? I watched, I rewatched all the because I'd never seen him when they aired. I rewatched all the episodes with my wife a few years ago, and to me, Brian made that show. Like his comedy and and like he was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, the first time we ever met him, we were literally on set, ready to film the first scene, and it was the scene where um, our mom is shaving him at the kitchen table of the first episode and he comes on set and he had like a skin toned speedo on and he's all covered in hair. He's like, Hey, I'm Brian. I'm going to be your dad. You know? <laughs> and he's just the coolest guy. Like, you know, and so it's, it's weird to think that if any actor on the show on, on most shows were, if he didn't get cast, mm-hmm. it would have, the show would have been completely different. Like, yeah. I don't, maybe it wouldn't have been nearly as successful or, or, or not. And, then you wouldn't have had, if you think the the domino effect, there would have been no Breaking Bad. There would have been no, you know, like, yeah. Man, Better yeah. Call Saul. We're so lucky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you just watched the the series all the way through a couple of years ago for the first time? Yeah, yeah. What was that like? You know, it's funny because I don't, how do I put this? I don't, I could watch it as a, as like a spectator, as a fan. Like I didn't, I didn't see it as me. You know what I mean? And then also, we did so many episodes. I actually didn't remember what most 
what happens in most of the episodes, so I could actually watch it. But it definitely changed my perspective of what the show was. Like I like the comedy even when we were filming it or we were doing it. I imagine that the show was different than it actually ended up being. You know what I mean? And there were characters that when I was filming, I was like, "This is stupid." That actually were my favorite. They ended up becoming some of my favorite moments when I rewatched the show. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, I I I enjoyed I enjoyed it. You know, I there's been a lot of I don't know speculation about like my memory and a lot of it has to do with the fact that i feel like i did so much like so many episodes so many things and and you just kind of do it you you know you film and but i think the biggest thing for me is i don't distinguish there's three things things that i dreamt i go like did that happen because i've I've had so many crazy dreamlike things happen in reality but then also like most of my life and most of my childhood i was pretending to be someone else you know what i mean and like doing things that I had to do that weren't really me, you know, so right. there's an element of like, yeah, you were Malcolm, right? Yeah. You I, know, I also think like, if, you're, that? if you're a performer, if you're doing like, for example, we do this show, we've done it three days a week for the last six years. Mm-hmm. I don't remember much like 30 minutes after the show. I don't <laughs> yeah. really remember what I said. Yeah. And sometimes it takes people to like remind us the next day and they like send us a quote that we said on the show. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. But like, you don't, you don't necessarily absorb all this stuff as yeah. you're doing it. My memory of Malcolm or filming Malcolm is what I've now seen on camera, right? right. Because that's the last, you know, like I, I see that. Or, you know, my my memory of most of my life comes from like seeing pictures. So I, I see it almost from the outside. I don't necessarily, I, I don't know what that is. If it was that you just do so much or you, you talk so much or, you, you know, you do so many shows that they all kind of come come together yeah or you get used to kind of being in the moment and doing it and then you know go on to the next part of your life um but, but yeah i don't know what 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 did happen with, i know you mentioned your health like there was a moment there where i think i remember reading it was like amnesia or something you had concussions yeah I, i've had nine concussions um which is not great you yeah know what I mean? um, are those all car crashes no a lot i played football and basketball i played every sport when i was right. growing up and you know, always fell and hit my head um right uh, I'm really close to the ground, so it's easy to hit my head <laughs> on the ground. Um, no, so there was that, and then I was, and this only recently figured out, wrongfully diagnosed with having TIAs, like tr- uh, mini strokes, okay. like uh, transient ischemic attacks. I was having these episodes where like I lose my vision, I couldn't recognize faces, couldn't talk, like all this kind of stuff, and it was happening pretty, pretty regularly. And um, I was told that I was having mini strokes or TIAs, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, only to find out after doing, like c- continuing to go, cause they would do all these tests and none of the things that should have shown up were showing up, but they were still kind of saying, yeah, it's this, it's this, it's this. Finally, I had a doctor really kind of look into it and it ends up, I was just having aura migraines, huh? which is still like sucks. Yeah. Like, it's still awful to have those episodes. But part of the, the story of, of how it kind of spread you know, I did Dancing with the Stars in, in 2017, and they have an episode where uh, it's the most me- most memorable year episode. And they told me that my most memorable year was 2001. <laughs> they and told I, you it. And I go, I don't, I don't really have anything to talk. I don't really know what happened in 2000. Like, I don't know what to say. And they're like, why? And I go, I, I, and they're interviewing me. And the way it got cut together, the and the way they put it was that I have zero memory of anything. Uh-huh. And then the press took it and it, and now if you search my name, it basically says, I don't remember like, anything, I, like right. 51st dates. My wife has to wake up every morning and like, tell me who she <laughs> is. And this right. is your son. And she plays a video, yeah. you know, like, no, no, I know I was Malcolm. You yeah, know, I just, right. I did a lot of stuff. You right. know, I, I don't, I don't remember everything. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's, I, I, I oftentimes like have, not memory issues, but like there's definitely a lot of things that I don't like. Someone will remind me of something, but like, oh yeah, I, I don't really remember that. And I was with just... my grandpa yesterday. He's 95 years old. You know what I mean? And he's like, do you remember? We went to that Papa John's. And I'm like, no. Yeah, right. I, my 95 year old grandpa can remember, but yeah. I don't. You know but what it I mean? was memorable for him. It might yeah. not have been like that sticking point for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I like to now talk about it a little bit because now that I have a better understanding of, of what it is or what I think it is, you know, cause, um, 
people come up to me all the time and they're like, oh, do you, do you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Your name is Frankie <laughs> Muniz. You were an actor. You're now trying to be a race car driver. You know <laughs> that's um, nuts. But the uh, the aura like migrate. Is there anything that you can do to like stop those or slow them I'm down? I'm trying least? to figure out now if there's something that triggers it. You know what I mean? Like, am I eating something? Right. You know what I mean? Or is it uh, high stress situations? I'm trying to figure that out now. But uh, I haven't had one in in a few years oh good knock on wood yeah yep. so now, all right now I yeah yeah, see. yeah. Um, you're allergic to it olive would be, oil it, it, yeah, yeah it was it no, would be great for the show might have fixed it yeah <laughs> it would be great for the show if you had one right now I'm not saying you want to fake one yeah, yeah where am i yeah. i have uh, another uh random thing i i read that is kind of a sad one but you met dale earnhardt right before he passed away right i did yes That's i uh nuts i was at the 2001 daytona 500 because malcolm had premiered the year before. Um, I was the grand marshal. I drove the pace car, and I was a big racing fan at that point. Um, and I got to go into the drivers' meeting. And as everyone was getting in the in their cars, I was on the grid. Uh, Dale Earnhardt came up to me, and he goes, "I just have to say, he's like, you've brought me and my daughter so much closer. Your show. He's like, I love your show. I'm a huge fan. I'm like, oh, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. And he signed my jacket, and he got in his car." So like other than his crew chief, essentially I was the last person Holy to, fuck, to nice. talk to him. And we were in the M and M's car, Ken Schrader's pit, when the, and he's the car who crashed into Dale Earnhardt. And uh, my mom was hanging out with uh, the owner of um, uh, the track, and and after the race, everyone was kind of worried, but nobody really knew anything. And I went to the hotel to watch the Clippers game. Mm -hmm. I ran ran upstairs to watch the Clippers game, and it was like breaking news. They announced that he had died. And I remember I ran down to the lobby to tell my mom, and she was with the track owner and everything. They didn't even know. I broke the news to the whole bar. Holy fuck! And like, it was it was just a crazy, like super somber, uh, yeah, experience. That's insane. That is yeah. And and so that how, did, how that old were you? Uh, 15, 16, 15, yeah. So they let you drive the pace car. Yeah, it was a Pontiac Aztec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, that didn't deter you at all from wanting to be a race car driver. <sighs> I mean, obviously, you know there, there's there's danger in 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 racing. I, that I think that specific incident changed the racing world in a huge way to be a lot safer. They right. implemented the Hans device then um, after that, and like you know, obviously, you know, in the '60s, '70s, '80s, like people died. You knew that two or three guys were not going to make it through the season. Right. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely become a lot safer. Granted, you're doing something dangerous. My thing is, you know. An air condition can fall out of a, you know, a window and crush me to today. That's you know my I mean? biggest fear. Well, I, I, it really is. You really don't know, right? You know, you know, I I know when I'm in the race car, I'm trying to go as fast as possible, and I'm not saying that you feel invincible. You know something can happen, but you can't think about that. Right. Like if you're thinking about that, or if, if there's fear in you, then you don't be a race car driver. You're right. not gonna you're not gonna be fast. Yeah, you know? that's that, that like watching. Uh, F1, like the drive to survive when they're talking yeah. about having to be on the edge and yeah. just always be like pushing to that limit of you're, you're basically almost crashing yeah. at all times. At all times. And if you, if any, there's anything in you that's like, ah, I don't want to get to that limit. You, you just got passed. Yeah. You're, you're done. Do you, that's do you, when you retire. Do you think, uh, people getting into F1 right now, just from the Netflix, like we're very casual fans. Um, do you look down on it at all? No, I think it's awesome. I mean, when I, cause I was racing open wheel cars 15 years ago and it was being in the U S nobody really understood what it was that like, I would try to explain like, you know, IndyCar, formula one, they're like, is it NASCAR? You know, pe people mm -hmm. really knew that. So it's kind of cool that, you know, motorsports in general in the U S is growing. And I think, you know, more F1 fans will bring more IndyCar fans, which will bring more NASCAR fans, you know, cause yeah. once you get into the sport of racing, once you get into kind of watching it. You understand it more, and the, the the stories, and what drivers don't like each other, and that that's kind of what becomes yes. fun about it. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's what what you know, Drive to Survive did so great for Formula One is it it showed people the personalities and what goes on behind the scenes, and you know, and and some of the drama. So when you watch on track, things that happen, it means more to you. Yeah, you know I mean? no, the fastest way to get fans is to show them rivalries, mm -hmm. and then also let them figure out what the goat debate is. Like, yeah, who's yeah. the goat? Yeah. So who's your goat of racing? Um, uh, and it could be any racing. I'm I I would say the 
the best series of drivers, in my opinion, and this might get me in trouble, is IndyCar. Okay. Because there's 24 guys, you know, who race every week and all 24 of them could win. You know, where in Formula One, like it really is contingent upon what car you're in. Right. You know what I mean? You're seeing that with Hamilton. Like, uh, you know, he's won so many races, but his car is not good and he's an eighth place guy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't mean that he's not a, as good of a driver as he was. Just the equipment mattered that much more. So I think, you know, to win in a series like IndyCar where like literally everybody's the, a, a top driver and it, it really about your performance um, is is tough. You and know. who's the best of all time, Indy? I mean, Scott Dixon, he's what, a six-time champion. I mean, there's so many good guys. I don't, yeah. I don't know. You know, I... I know Andretti. I'm an Andretti guy. Yeah. yeah. And Al Unser Jr. Yeah. I uh, I raced with Al Unser Jr. Um, in a in a race, and I out-qualified him, and that was the co- the coolest yes. thing oh, wow. in the I world. Take to him out now you're the goat. Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have to do to get you in NASCAR? How how many steps away are you from competing? I mean, I, I've been racing, like I said, I've been doing stuff to, pr- to prepare, because obviously racing NASCAR or racing uh, stock car cars um although it's racing and i've been a race car driver it's like comparing olymp olympic diving and olympic swimming you know they both involve a pool but it, it, it they're very different you know what i mean like the the racing styles so i've been doing a lot of uh oval races and soccer races just to kind of to hone uh that craft um a, a lot of it has to do with sponsorship obviously you know what i mean um i i We've got to raise a lot of it's it costs a lot of money to go to go racing and and um so it's that's kind of what we're looking for and we'll see uh see yeah. where, where it, billionaires out there elon musk is a listener of the show so elon yeah if you want to sponsor frankie it's a small small yeah, drop in the market. Market. yeah. You finding your couch cushions yeah. yeah you know but you know i i i'm as a race car driver, I know that there's things that I, I, I need to do for, for companies and for things, and I'm, I'm willing to do all those things. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to I wanna be a race car driver. Like I said, I'm not doing it as a as a fluke or, mm-hmm. or so whatever I've got to do to get in the car and, and uh, win races, uh, I'm, I'm ready. That's awesome. All right, so I had one last question. It's a rowback question. Go to rowback.com, put in code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, Q-Zips, hoodies, polos, everything, rowback.com. All right, last question. True or false, you want to work at Barstool. Or you did at one point want to work at Barstool. <laughs> I, I I would love to. Um, you hit up Dave, didn't you? Is that did. how the story goes? No, we had, I don't know how we got connected, but I I, I I I DM'd him and I was like, dude, like let me work at Barstool. He's like, well, what would you do? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, listen, drive the Barstool yeah. NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, obviously, no, yeah. the fact there's that a Dave, lot of people who've gotten jobs that way. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> fact that Dave asked you, like, what would you do here? That shows like way more planning than most hires. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, he was actually screening you harder than he screens yeah. anyone else. That was nice, very, nice. very yeah. tough. Yeah. No, I just I don't know. Like, you guys seem like you have a lot of fun, and we I don't do. Know, I, I, we uh, do. Mm-hmm. I want to have fun. Yeah. I mean, you, you have a crazy like career history with everything you've tried. We should probably just add Barcel to it. Just, uh, hey, yeah. you know, I'm, 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 I'm still down. So. Get him okay. on the team. All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, Frankie, this has been awesome. We appreciate it. Best of luck in the racing. Thank you and, so much. Uh, yeah, let's get you in NASCAR. I'd love it. Frankie Munoz is brought to you by our great friends over at Game Time. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute t- ticket deals on sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the very lowest price. You can find MLB tickets for under 15 bucks all in on game time. Yankees tickets as low as $14. Red Sox, $14. Mets, $13. Braves, $14. Cubs, $12. You name your team, game time has the hookup on deals for you to get out to the ballpark. They crack the code on how to score deals on last-minute tickets. They have the biggest last-minute price drops that you can find on the seats that you never thought that you'd be able to afford. I've used game time several times this year, not just for baseball, went to some concerts, game time, hooked it up. Game time gets you the best tickets that you can find. It makes it easy to find last minute tickets as well. Super, super functional app. It's very, very easy to use and you get the lowest prices. Download the game time app, go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code PMT for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Just download the Game Time app, go to that account tab, create your login, and redeem code PMT. Get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Some terms apply. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show with our Mount Rushmore and the return of the man, Billy Football. Billy, it's great to have you back. Clap it up for Billy. Welcome back, Billy. Time spent 
Sussy, sussy spent. You, you served it all. How you feeling? Uh, oh, wait. Talking to the mic, Billy. This is. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's it's great to be back. Thank you guys for having me back. Uh, I've spent my time reflecting, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. All right. Yeah. What did we learn over our summer vacation? Um, I learned a good amount. Off the top of my head, Premiere. I've been using a lot of Premiere. Okay. What uh, is that? It's a editing software for videos. Oh, wow. hell yes. Yeah. So really got into that. Um, and also sort of to put it. This is going to be profound. No. Uh, I sort of learned that like. Speak from the heart, Billy. Yeah. This is, tr this is trust tree. Yeah. We're okay. Sure. We're family. We, a, believe it or not, a, yeah. we did miss you. Yeah. And a lot of people missed you. Not like every day, but we missed you at some points. There was definitely no. points. Like when Zach Wilson's mom uh, started fucking a bunch of moms, I missed you. That's hearsay. Okay. That's libel. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Not, it, it was libel written on the Instagram comment, and anyone who says it is then uh, committing slander. I do have okay. a question about that for you, though. Yeah. Wait, 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 was, wait. He's got to say his profound thing. Yeah, say your profound thing. Uh, it's, it's hard to express into words, but probably just humility. And um, just um, uh, sort of, you know, sometimes you get into head spaces that you, you can't really see what's right in front of you. Right. And uh, you're not really aware of things because you're in the thick of it. And, you know, you can't see out of the woods from the trees and uh, sort of got a different perspective. Sometimes you got to, you know, get out of the situation you're in to realize what that situation actually is. And that's sort of what happened. I like that. That's great. That was supposed to be the point of it, and I, I feel like uh, if that's how you're feeling coming out of it, then it, then it's good for all of us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the Zach Wilson thing, he it was he fucked his mom's friend, right? It wasn't his friend's mom, right? It was his allegedly his mom's friend. Because that's it. I I was thinking about that the other day. That would be a different story. Correct. You broke the code. As John Morant would say, if you fucked your friend's mom. Well, the thing that the reason why it was never clarified is because it's a lie. It mm -hmm. was okay. said by a scorned lover. It's a very cool lie. I wish right. people would lie about us like yeah. that all the time. Yeah. Just fucking milfs all the time. Bro, I mean, there was some serious breach of bro code. <laughs> by, um, by who? By his former uh, roommate and Got it. teammate yep. who he threw mm -hmm. tons of touchdowns to. Some and, Team Zach. Yeah. And, and he's a commander now. The other guy, I don't even know his name. He's a nobody. Dax but, Milne? Yeah, yeah. The only reason that guy's on the commanders is because of Zach Wilson. And then he just goes That's and a fact. bangs his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. So, and then they were he's getting so much flack for it that they just threw out that slander. Yeah. Homie hopper. Exactly. So, um, but you, so if it were true, what would be your take then? This is a hypothetical. Um, I think that, you know, the last great quarterback the Jets have had, championship winning quarterback, was Joe Namath. Yeah. And if it were true, uh, but I don't think it is, Zach is an outstanding man on and off the field, and he, you know, is going to lead the Jets to more success. But if it were true, uh, you know, he's showing a little Joe Namath in him. Yeah. Joe Namath definitely had that dog in him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a. That's a Broadway Joe. Are we getting a Broadway Zach who's about to bring a championship? Oh, Broadway to Zach. The Jets? I like, like mm. that. The Book of Mormon. Yeah. yeah. It's a long standing play. Exactly. Okay, so what other story, any other takes that you missed? Any stories that we talked about that you're like, oh man, I wish I was on the show right now? Uh, one thing I did realize over the break was you know those do, uh, oh, first thing. Uh, Jack Nicklaus is yeah, pronounced Jack mm -hmm. Nicklaus. You found like a, like a bunch of clips from like. You know, 1920. It was, it was it was actually impressive. I think that those clips were the original way they pronounced his name. And just over time, it's been butchered and he just hasn't but, had the effort to correct everybody. Okay, so one problem, though, is though you didn't – that wasn't you, – you didn't watch those clips as, like, a kid. Uh, I may have. Okay, that you were watching with the sound on, off. on mute, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, yeah. like, my grandparents said Niklaus. Right. And that's how it was said. Got it. Uh -huh. Did you From listen to clips. the podcast at all, Billy? I get really bad FOMO. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fair. That's a totally fair like, answer. It, it was, yeah. Yeah, it was actually a little sad when we were going out to play mini golf, and uh, we were all driving out to the Hamptons to stay the night, and Billy had to take the cooler out of my, my car before we all hopped in the car, and I like we kind of caught eyes, and it was he was just like a sad puppy. But it was, you know, it was part of the suspension. I know. And, I mean, to ha I, mean I, I kept up with it. I, like, read through everything, kept the clips, but, like, 
mm-hmm. having to listen that whole time. Yeah, it's too painful. It's it too is. close to the heart. <laughs> it's just like, because then I start talking, like trying to talk, and then I, I'm like in a car by myself. Oh, you, you, oh, you, you try to chime guys. in. Yeah, yeah. You you should, like, that, that's what like, you should have done, actually. You should have like done practice rounds. You should have recorded yourself. Yeah, like, like just oh, chiming I in. I said this here. Yeah, I mean, I then I, when you just talk to yourself alone in a car, you sort of. Yeah. Anyway, that's a fair answer. I, no, I actually was, think that's a totally fair answer to be like, I, I miss, you know, you, it is, it sucks to not be around here. So now you're back. Yeah. But no, it was, it was something that needed to happen. Needed to experience that. And, uh, it's good to be back. Welcome yeah. back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, okay. We're glad that you're back. Uh, we still got some big things coming this summer, so it's going to be fun. And we missed you from Mount Rushmore season. So, uh, I think it's been a great Mount Rushmore season so far. Now we get the pairing of Jake and Billy, which is really what we wanted when we when we came up with Team Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's going to be Jake and Billy versus Hank and Liam versus me and PFT. And a perfect one to come back for for you guys to be combined as a team. PFT came up with the idea. We're going to do the Mount Rushmore of ways to kick things up. So ways to kick things up, Mount Rushmore. You guys should go first because you guys, you know, you, you've, you've been gone and you're why, back. Why don't you select the entire order, Billy? Yeah. Tell us which order we're going to go in. So uh, we have to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll go clockwise. Okay. Counter- so. Yeah. Wait, counter. So that would clockwise. 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 So uh, hey, Hubba second. Hubba. You guys. Catcom. Okay. By the way, just to specify, is it ways to kick things up a notch? A notch. Or a notch. Kick, yeah. A notch. Sorry. I kick forgot a notch. A notch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because kicking things up. Yeah, that's is it like different. Punting. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Or like you know paying paying to your you know your capo. Exactly. Right. Right. Paying your weekly weekly uh, fee. The Jake, vig. You could the also vig, say yeah. turn things up a notch. That yeah. also works for this too. Yeah. Yeah. Kick things up a notch. Turn things up a notch. Okay. Here we go. One one. Billy and Jake back together. How did the process go from your perspective, Jake? Uh. Billy shot down most of my, my ideas, but <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna hold my ground this year and say I'm picking one or two. Okay, um, okay. nice, nice. So nice. this one is actually Billy's idea. No, no, it was not my idea. Jake came up with this. You can look at the this text chat. This is great. It would be very. So why are you letting him pick one one? Well, he's gonna pick. It's this is his choice. Okay, one one. But it's your return. But Jake just said that it was Billy's idea. <laughs> Whose idea was it? Before I hear this idea, I need to know whose idea it was. It was Jake's. It was Jake's. Don't lie in the first step. I'm not (laughs) lying. It was Jake's idea, and then I gave him a suggestion to make it better. Okay. Okay. So you kicked things up a notch on his idea. Exactly. Oh, I like that. I did. I did. It's inception. Wow. Okay. All right. Shotgunning a beer. Okay. All right. Good one. Good pick. Billy couldn't say that. What was your first... Oh, because of the problems he's had? (laughs) Um, What was your... What was the... How, okay, all right. That's good pick. Good pick. Good pick, guys. Good no, pick. I was. I said having that one more cores. Having one more cores. Got it. Mm-hmm. Shotgun like, beer is definitely yeah. a way to kick things up a notch. Yeah. I like that pick. All right, Hubba. Let's go with uh, just levels. Levels. Good yep, one. Good pick. Good pick. Playing good levels. Pick. Playing song. levels. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So we have two picks now. Uh, I think our one one is still on the board. PFT, if you want to say it. Remember, uh, it was a thing that your first my one, first one. Yep, ordering yep. shots. Yep, ordering, ordering shots because you could you could be having cold ones at the table, but then one person's like, "Jmo." Yeah, and then you know that it's on. Yeah, and it's just like, okay, this is going to be a different type of night. Like J- when the first round of shots get gets ordered, it's on. Yeah, and don't there is there is that one. There's a shots guy who can kind of overplay his hand. Yep. The guy who's just always like, let's do shots, let's do shots. But that perfect, yeah, like you maybe had like three or four beers. Mm-hmm. And someone's like, let's do a round of tequila. Yeah. Boom, so, it's so going. If, if, if the shot, your first shot of the night is like your fourth drink, at that point you know you're not going home before two. Yeah, yeah. The shot guy is either trying to do your first drink of the night is shots or you're all hammered and you're like barely hanging on. He's like, let's do shots. I feel like... The fir- if you do shots the first drink of the night, that's not really kicking it up a notch. No, it's your, you're that's starting your, at that's a high your baseline. level. Yeah. 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 You could do shots if like if you're late joining the party and you want to play catch up. Right. But that's still you're not turning up a notch, but if you order those shots after you've started, consider the notch kicked up. Yes. Okay, all right. Our second pick is going to be uh playing A C D C. Any type of A C D C, any song. 
that always kicks it up a notch. They're just rock so fucking hard. And I feel like everyone, like when you hear ACDC back in black, for those about to rock, oh, Hank's giving me the face. Hank's doing his face. Hank, what what part of ACDC do you not think kicks it up a notch when they write a song? About, I think they have a about, couple songs. About, I couldn't. If you just put on any ACDC song, there's a lot of people be like, "What the fuck is this?" No, no. there's listen. There's AC like three DC. songs. No, you no. want you want me to name Wrong. like six songs yeah. off the top of my head yes. that you would know. Okay, you shook me all night long. Okay, that's a notch. That's yes. Back in black. That's a big notch. Huge notch. Back in black. Huge I notch. Say. Thunderstruck. Yes, that's a great one. Huge notch. Great one. Huge notch on that one. For those about to rock. For those about to rock. Huge notch. Hell's bells. Yes. Jesus. Consider yes. the notch elevated. Yes. You want me to keep going on? Dirty. That's, that's five. Dirty, dirty deeds, deeds done dirt cheap. Yeah. Six. Dirty yeah. Dirty yeah. Not different audiences. You're speaking to the olders. If you play ACDC, you just immediately are like, "Let's fucking go." I want to hit someone. I want to drink. I want to fucking do shit. I want to order shots after hearing that. Yeah. Good it's picks. Those are good it's picks. It's a notch accelerator is what it is. I, if you do any of these other activities while listening to ACDC, the notch gets higher. Yeah, I appreciate you being Sourpuss Hank because you just made us prove our point. I wasn't being more. Sourpuss Hank at like, all. That catalog <laughs> yeah, that we just rattled off is insane. I I, I forgot about how many good songs I had. Yeah, and so as, a, as a man of honor and integrity, I'm admitting that. Okay. All right. Shout out to me. Shout right. out Hank. Uh, our second pick... Maybe you're at the casino, you're gambling, you've been there for a while, maybe things aren't going super good, or maybe you're just kind of like, you know, middle of the pack, not having the best night, not having the worst night. You want to kick it up a notch, just put it all on black or red. Yep. That's good. That's a good instant one. Instant energy, instant energy boost. It gets the juices flowing, gets everyone excited. If you win, then you're going to have a great night. And let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. That That's actually gave one. me a good idea for another one. Yeah, me too. You're welcome. Okay. Great. No, it was a great pick. That was a great pick. I should get your pick. Off of my pick. Okay. All right. Uh, Jake and Billy, back to you. Two picks in a row. Uh, letting the bodies hit the floor. Ooh, okay. Okay. I mean, this song has been ingrained in our culture for, <laughs> I think there's just one uh, NFL hits highlights on YouTube that had this song connected to it. And I think it was the most viewed. And I think every single male in America has watched it. Yeah. Close to. And then if you put that song on, it's just... It's electric. Yeah, there's it, the bodies are hitting the floor. Yep, yep. And it, it's a just a not even just the song, just letting the bodies hit the floor. You can also do you can put a bad highlight reel to let the bodies hit the floor, and it becomes great. Exactly. I think I did that with Will Compton's playoff, like his highlight reel from two years ago when he was going down like as a gunner on kick return. Yeah, and he like made a couple tackles on it, but it was like largely a special teams reel. Yeah, but you add let the bodies hit the floor to it, and it's like oh fuck, oh, this guy yeah. has playoff Willie. He's about to fuck some if, shit up. If you put that on, I don't think anyone really actually plays it out loud. Like in a weight room, it plays because it gets you hyped. But if you play that just in a bar or something, I don't think anyone's getting out of there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so. good one, good pick. All right, your third pick. I, I just want to listen to ACDC right now. Yeah. <laughs> just kicking when up. When this notch. happens in a football game, everything changes. A surprise onside kick. Oh, yeah, that's good. great pick. That's a great pick. Thank you. Uh, Shit. It's just wh whether you're, it helps you or hurts you, you can always go back to that surprise onside kick. Uh -huh. And that changed everything. Yeah, that does kick it up a notch for yeah. sure. So, great pick. Thanks. Uh, we do this all the time here. Sunday nights, we need to kick it up a notch before football. Ah, smelling salts. Yeah. yeah. Smelling yeah. salts kicks it up a notch. A, a, a notch, for sure. It does. Okay. I, I miss the salts. Yeah. Yeah, good pick. I got a bunch on Amazon Prime Day. Oh, nice. For this season. Thank you. All right, um, Big Cat, for our next one, I think I'm going to go with number four on yep. my list. Yep, yep, Okay. Yep. Adding cheese to it. Mm -hmm. Putting cheese on an order. Anything. Anything. Just like, yeah, let's throw some cheese on that. Yep. Yeah, I'll take cheese with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Toss some cheese on that. Maybe some pepper jack. Might be cheese. Yeah. Pepper jack really kicks it up. And Melt up. some cheese on it. Yes. Yes. Bill Adding cheese. Billy took exception to that. I mean, if you eat something cheesy, you go to sleep right after. Great point, Billy. <laughs> that's like that's like it's a great night, point, Billy. That's like Hank's a night now happy Billy's back. It kicks you. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys back. shame me for you know any disagreement. It's that's, like I thought this the Mount Rushmore was embracing debate. No, it is. No, it I is. Get scared to. I, I don't shame you for disagreements. I shame you for going like this. <laughs> I shame After you for having pick. for having a bad <laughs> you opinion. Voice about your something. disagreement. People can't see your sourpuss face. You need to voice your disagreement. <laughs> if you eat a chicken parm, you will fall asleep. 
Not yeah, but that might be more the bread and the breaded chicken. Isn't I know, it? but the cheese. That's the cheese. Puts you down. But adding cheese to any dish kicks it up. I don't know. I'm t- I'm not talking about cereal. Like, wait, wait, wait. Billy is conflating the kicking it up a notch with like wanting to stay up till four a.m. drinking beers. That's not necessarily no. the case. So in this case, you're kicking the entire meal up a notch by adding queso to it. The meal is what gets elevated. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, our last pick, I'm uh, PFT. I like what you just texted me. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak it just a little. It's going to be uh, put putting a monster bet on like a prime time or big game when you're like, all right, Sunday night football, let's go fucking all in here. Monday night football or like there's a huge basketball game. Whenever you do that, it kicks it up a notch. Kicks the whole day up a notch, the whole life up a notch. Your game of the year just feels game, different. Game of the year is like... I'm like scared to say one word. Dude, I get excited. Just Sometimes I'll just daydream about like, oh, I'm going to do a game of the year. Just there, that feeling, that, that rush you have where you're like, this is going to be awesome. We're going to watch this game. And we got, we, got a, we got like a real confident pick in this game. If you're ever feeling like half in, half out, like nonplussed about a primetime game, Boom! Just put Kick a monster bet on it. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. Now, now, now it's yeah, the most important game of all time. The boys are over. Let's all group group bet together on a big fucking side. Boom! Kicking it up a notch. All right, your last pick, Hank. Our last pick. It's a group. It's a team. Team effort. Uh, Good reminder. Thank you. Uh, our last pick <laughs> is going to be committing a crime. Oh! <laughs> That's good. That's good. That does kick it up a notch. Yeah. It kicks it up a notch. It could be something minor, you know, even just like, you know, a light goes yellow, then red, but you're like, fuck it, I'm just going to speed right through anyway. It could be like, you know, maybe the bartender's not giving you any looks. You reach over the bar or something. Oh. Anything, anything, or it could be high level, like robbing a bank, robbing a gas station, whatever it may be. Yeah. Committing a crime kicks it up a notch 10 out of 10 times. You know, yep. my theory about bank robbers is I think I think you get away with robbing banks way more than we're told. Yeah. Because nobody would rob a bank. We only hear on the news about a bank robber getting caught. You never hear about the guys that rob banks that don't get caught. Because they don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, what is it, 60%? I think think we might have looked it up a while ago. I think, like, 60% of bank robberies go unsolved. Yeah. Sundance Kid. It's a great business model. Yeah. Okay, good one. Thank you. Uh, Oh, we, oh, that was our honorable mention. We have, we have some good honorable mentions. Go ahead. This one's deep in the bag, uh, but in historically, when you really wanted to kip it, kick it up a notch, and like you had a bunch of dudes, and you really wanted to motivate them and get them going, you burn the boats. Burning the boats. Burning the yeah. boats. <laughs> yeah, burn the boats. Many times in history, guys were like, oh, we want to go home. We want to not keep it going. And one dude was just like, we're burning the fucking boats. Yeah, Put cash in the, the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cash the seal. Cash the seal, we're coming back. Yeah. Yeah, burning the boats is good. When I was in Nashville a couple weeks ago, that was like our, our motto for the trip. We just kept saying, burn the boats. Like, it didn't matter what we were doing. Yeah. It's just, if you say burn the boats, it gets the boys pumped up. Yes, yes. Okay, all right, honorable mentions. That was a good Mount Rushmore. Honorable mentions. Um, we did have on our list that missed the cut for us is uh, just putting all the windows down or the taking off the uh, sunroof. That always kicks it up a notch. When you're driving on the highway, I was uh, gonna steal game of the years from you, but I didn't. So shout out to wow. me. Wow, too. <laughs> really? Yeah. Doubling down in general, just when you double down on anything. Yeah. You know. I yeah. Think that was. I, I had uh, one similar, but I. It, but when you do one, you're supposed to. It doesn't feel like you're. No, it, it does. No, though. it doesn't feel it does. as risky. Even you have even to do when it. you do it, you're still you're kicking eleven up against a notch. the six. Well, so doubling down either in the course of a hand of blackjack, that's kind of kicking it up a notch. But if you just decide to double your bet, yeah, or yeah, you oh, win yeah, a bet yeah, and yeah. then you just double it. Yeah, okay. you let it ride. I thought yeah. you were talking about eleven versus six. Yeah, yes. letting yeah. it ride. Letting Double, it ride. Yeah, letting it ride. Um, doubling twelve. Yep. Yep. <laughs> doubling on twelve. Um, cocaine. Do it responsibly. Um, what else? Turning another on, football one. Turning on Sandstorm. Yep. Yeah. Sandstorm. I had, uh, Sandstorm's great yeah, one. Uh, going for two in the first quarter. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah. Steelers, eight nothing. I like that. Yeah. Flea flickers. Mm-hmm. Just in general, kick it up a notch. Yeah, Feels a, like a, it does. A gadget play in general. Yeah, a gadget play kicks it up a notch, just kind of fucks the whole flow up. Dessert. Dessert? Dessert? I, 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 I had that on my list, but I, I had... Like, sometimes you're like, I'm, I'm not going to get dessert, but when you're having a dessert night, I mean, you probably have dessert nights all the time, but, like, t- sometimes the fuck? it's like... Yeah, that was uncalled for. <laughs> but, like, some people, it's like... There's, I literally, you literally were in my house, and I gave you ice cream. You it was, said, do we have ice cream? And I was like, actually, yeah, we do, because we always do. Yeah, that was and a rhetorical question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, but, yeah. 
Uh, like sometimes it's like you go to you know dinner if it's like a weeknight you're like yeah, I'm good with dessert but if it's a dessert night it's like you're kicking it up a notch I think lighting a dessert on fire is cool too yeah that lighting anything on fire yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. good point yeah lighting anything starting, on fire. starting a fire starting shooting a fire. into the air <laughs> yep that kicks it <laughs> yep. up a notch uh, beer before noon just kicks it up a notch mm-hmm. it always like that's because the notch is so low that just one beer before noon is like Billy don't get ideas uh, that's like. You know, you, you kick it up a notch when you're the first guy, if you're like on a trip or something and you just crack that first beer, mm-hmm. being the first person to crack the beer on like a guy's trip, that always kicks it up a notch. The rest of the day is going to be effortless at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Smooth sailing. Yeah. I had uh, Steve Adazio videos. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Adazio. Or, uh, I think Billy would agree. Waka is like. Yeah. Waka. Waka. Yeah. yeah. Waka. Yeah. Waka. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's very good That's height. good. Turning on Gremlin mode. Yeah. Grim- <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? You guys probably don't know that song yet. It's a kind of underground. Been hot to sauce, it hot sauce in general. Yeah. I also this one. Drive you guys can tell me if this one's way off, but I think just throwing a ball around turns it up, kicks it up a notch. When you're like maybe sitting around and you get a ball and then it's just like a ball enters a room because you know you can't like you can't just not throw a ball around if you have a ball and then it slowly like becomes like a game and then you're tossing it and chucking it. I think that always kicks it up a notch. Yeah, I was going to, like, gets the blood flowing. Yeah, like right. you're all just sitting around, and you're like, let's go outside. Yeah, like, like if I had a tennis ball right now, I was yeah. chucking around, you guys would, all of you in this room would be like, yo, pass that to me. And then it becomes, like, a, a thing. Yeah. Big booty mix 13. Mm-hmm. Any, that's big, for the, any big booty mix. That's for the younger crowd. Yep. That's a good sure. one. Yeah. Shout, shout out to the friends. Yep. Ooh, when you were younger, a belly flop or a cannonball. Ooh, yeah. At the pool party, that yeah. was yeah. Pushing someone in the pool always kicks it up a notch. <laughs> yeah, you can't Puts do that anymore though with, with with phones. I know. You can't really prank somebody who's fully clothed. But that does kick it up a notch because everyone's like, "Oh, who's gonna get pushed in next?" Yeah. Panting someone. Oh, uh-huh. great one. Tearing their pockets off the back of their jeans. Yes. Farting in public. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, explain that yeah, one. Go on. I don't know. Just like, yeah, I guess maybe it doesn't kick it up a notch. Is it a rush? You get a rush from that? Yeah. Back. All right, I take that back. Oh, no. It's honorable mention. Yeah. Pulling into a McDonald's randomly on a road trip. Kicking it up a notch? Nah. Yeah. Nah. But is it random on a road trip? It's also like like part, that's like expected. No, but it's like, you usually want to get like a... Pulling into a strip club on a road trip. Ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Going to a strip club definitely keeps Like, I feel like if you're going on a road trip, then it's expected that you're going to pull into a McDonald's at some point. Yeah. A surprise Re- strip club visit. Yeah. yeah. Also, a, su- a surprise road trip kicks it up a notch. You're like, let's just fucking go here. Um, going driver off the deck. Kicks it up a mm-hmm. notch. Driver on par three. Kicks it up a notch. Dry scooping pre-workout. Kicks it up a yeah. notch. Sniffing pre-workout. Sniffing yeah. glue. Responsibly. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Eating a cheesesteak before a podcast. I think that turns it down, right? Because yeah. then you just, have to... Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the cheese. The cheese. Putting cheese on it turns it down. <laughs> a- adding guac to a burrito. Mm-hmm. Kicks it up enough. Even though it's extra. Speeding. Yep. I guess that would be under your crimes, but yeah. Running from the police. Yeah. Yeah, we're helping Hank here. He's just happy. I mean, that was a good pick. The crimes one. Yeah, was, crimes was a great was a good pick. pick. It was a fucking great pick. Memes. Headbutting stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Getting in a, f- a fight kicks it up a notch. Always. Okay. Anything else? I think that's good. That was a good Mount Rushmore. Kick it up a notch. It's all. I just want to listen to ACDC, though. Kick yeah. Kick it up a fucking notch. Just fucking get crazy with it. Uh, all right. Well, that is our show. Should we oh, do it? Dragula. Dragula, yeah. yeah. Oh, what yeah, about Morbin? Dragula, that's a huge, huge miss. Morbin? Morbin? Yeah. It's Morbin if you, time. If you get up and you're you're like, I'm going to Morbin today. Mm-hmm. I'm always definitely Morbin. definitely kicking it up a notch. Morbin feels, always feels. Oh. Morbin oh, Freeman. Ordering pancakes for a table does kick it up a notch. It does, uh, you know, because it does just like, hey, we're all, we're going in. It, that could be just, if you just are like, let's get every appetizer, that kicks it up a notch. Yeah, yeah. Doing an apps dinner. Yeah, being being like I got this, and then getting like eight appetizers that kicks it up a notch. The uh, the pancakes move. I don't know if it's kicking up a notch, but it makes everybody else at the table a little bit more calm because everyone was thinking, yeah. oh, I might get the pancakes. Yeah. But then when somebody orders it for the table, then you're like, we're good. Okay, I don't yeah. have to worry about ordering the pancakes yes. anymore. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, let's do numbers. Great to have you back, Billy. You're back in the fold. You're back. I'm in gonna black. take sixty nine. Back in black. Wait. Have you guys? Has, 69's 96. Hit. 69's hit it, it, four it, times. I think it was three. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was three. It was three times. The uh, fourth was six. on the computer, so it didn't count. 26. 69. 27. Hank? 96. Okay, my real pick is 21. You turn it on, Billy? Is it on? I think it's unplugged on your end. Nope. It's it's light, it's lit up. Hank, have you ever No. You've never gotten this, right? <gasps> Eighty eight. Uh, the pool. Ooh. Patrick Kane's gonna get traded. Otters are necrophiliacs. Love you guys. That's true, they fuck dead otters? Yeah, they're fucked up. Otters are like serial killers. Whoa. Don't they hold hands though? No, they're not cool at all. Look I guess into that would it. be like the normal side of the. Story. How do they? How do they yeah. hear? Investigate otters. Do they have sea lion ears? Yeah, they're external. <laughs> That's what we gotta call <laughs> anyone who has <laughs> external ears. Those are sea lion ears. <laughs> Ryan Whitney is half sea lion. <laughs> sea lions have internal ears. No, no, wrong, 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 Billy. You don't Wait. listen. Seals have internal ears. Sea lions have external wow. ears. Wow. Don't you feel foolish? You so when you said that you read all the stuff that we put out, that's also not. That's I wasn't not true. <laughs> we got caught in a lie. First day back. <laughs> yeah, look it up. Look it up. You were wrong. Damn. Yeah, damn is yeah. right. Yeah, have some of sea that. Sea lions also try to attack people much more than people think. Yeah, but they have external ears. That's the yeah. Main I just point I just here. checked it out. They're also very cute. Yeah, love you guys. Dangerous.